Space travelers, welcome home. You've just tuned your dial to Space Dial Radio, the only place where you can own the night. I am your host, Mr. Rob G. And tonight we're broadcasting to you on our terrestrial affiliates in North America and digitally on Talk Stream Live, KPNL, and Odyssey Radio. Remember, you can access our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Space Dial Radio. And while you're there, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Spaced Out Radio and at Spaced Out Radio Show. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where the options are endless. You can stay up to date with the SOR Newswire, get some official, official Space Style swag, plus rock out to some Bumblefoot and so, so, so much more. Welcome, welcome to the show tonight. Uh, this is going to be a great Sunday. We're going to be joined tonight by Reverend, Reverend Michael Carter. Uh, as you remember, last time he was here, it was totally awesome. Uh, we got into talking about the whole spirituality aspect of this phenomenon, how things connect and interconnect. We're going to be doing more of that tonight. Um, so, you know, definitely get lace your boots up and get ready and put on put on your uh, break out your notepad and, and and maybe even jot some of these things down. Uh, re re regardless on what, you know, religious background you may come from, uh, just understanding uh, why this thing is here and why, you know, why we're going through what we're going through and, and have we gone through this thing before, right? The, the history I've always said is so important to what it is that we're, the, what, the fields that we're navigating and, uh, you know, this is all about absorbing information together and trying to build this puzzle you know for our descendants down the line so i think we will be making more uh moves uh on getting that needle moved tonight so definitely want to thank you guys for coming on in it is sunday after hour so it means you're wrapping up your weekend getting ready for a wonderful work week we're gonna uh, manifest a, a, a beautiful work week for you so uh we're gonna put that energy out there and uh, we, when we talk again on Saturday, next Saturday, you're going to say how fantastic the week was. Uh, and I can count on that. So with that being said, let me go ahead and take a look at our metal positions tonight, right? Courtesy of Race Fan. And uh, looks like we have Race Fan with the gold tonight. We have Deb from Sacramento with that silver and Dino Bravo fan with the bronze. So congratulations, guys. Thank you for coming on in tonight. And let's see who else decided to join us early here in the chat. Let me jump back to the beginning and see who we have. 
All right. Yep. So as we mentioned before, we had uh, Deb from SAC in here. Uh, welcome, Deb. Thanks for coming on in. We have uh, race fan, as we said, and Dino Bravo fan. So thank you all for coming in. Uh, also, to Mothman stepped in saying greetings all with the horn emoji, alien head emoji, and a horn emoji. We love it. Appreciate you coming on in to Mothman. Uh, who else do we have? We have Roger Murray dropping some more knowledge on us real quick here. March 22nd, 1989, 35th anniversary of Bob Lazar and the late great John Lear arrested Area 51 security guards trespassing, then released the next day. And you know, our guy, um, the legend Jim Goodall, uh, could definitely let us know about that. So if I knew, uh, maybe we'll just have him in for that anniversary, right? We might as well. Uh, he tells the story the best. And uh, who else Who else could we hear it from other than Mr. The Legend, the Mr. Jim Goodall? Uh, thanks for coming on in, Roger Murray. Thanks for that knowledge drop. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, looks like we do have Miss Catherine stepping on in here saying hello all with the wavy hand emojis. Hey, Miss Catherine, thanks for coming in tonight. Uh, let's see, who else do we have in here? Okay. Audacious Amber. All right. Audacious Amber saying, hey, thank you for coming on in, Audacious Amber. We appreciate you coming on into the after hours tonight. Uh, who else do we have here? Bar Madison. Bar Madison with the X. Okay, okay. Like that. Uh, seems like maybe a new name, Bar Madison. Thank you if, uh, for coming on in if you are a new name. We'd appreciate you considering coming back, maybe hitting that subscribe button. And, uh, yeah, we do this seven days a week here at Space Out Radio. So there's always something going on for your viewing pleasure. Uh, who else do we have in tonight? We have Brown Dwarf stepped in the building saying good evening. Good evening, Brown Dwarf. Thank you for coming on in. Uh, we have JSC077. Thank you for coming on in, JSC077. We do appreciate you showing up tonight. Uh, all right. And we do have Aloha Dave stepping in. Saludos a todos de Mexico, which we learned yesterday was greetings, greetings to everyone from Mexico. Thank you for coming on in. Aloha, Dave. Uh, let's see. All right. We have Speed Romans saying good energy. Yes. I like that speed Romans. You were in the right place and to, to speak about good energy. This is a place where good energy is uh, in abundance and we share it back and forth here. Uh, we put it out there in the universe for everyone else. So you're on the right path. Uh, I do appreciate you coming on in speed Romans. Uh, who else do we have here? Harold Samson saying Reverend Carter, a brother. Okay. Yes. Uh, Reverend Carter will be stepping in the building, joining us tonight and uh, filling some holes for you. I'm hoping, you know what I mean? So uh, I think this is definitely something we all could use to try to look at the deeper meaning of uh, what it is we're going through. So you came at the right time. All right. Nalacious saying, I made it. Yes, you did. Nalacious. It's going to be an awesome show tonight. We do appreciate you coming on in. And let's see, who else do we have? Who else do we have? Let's see, we got JSCO. We got Harolyn. Looks like we have Wildberry Candy Co. Good evening, loves. I hope you all had an absolutely amazing weekend. Definitely. Thank you for coming on in, Wildberry Candy Co. Uh, I hope everyone had an awesome weekend as well. At least we can finish it off awesome if it wasn't awesome. But hopefully we, if it was awesome, we could just make it more awesome uh, with this show tonight. So I guess we'll see what happens, right? You're definitely in the right place, though. Thanks for coming on in. Uh, we got Joe Monk stepping in saying, Tim, hey, Joe Monk, thanks for showing up tonight. We appreciate you coming through to the after hours and getting it in. Right. We got little Cam 5-1 stepping on over from Twitch. We appreciate you, little Cam 5-1. 
uh, saying hashtag YOLO, you only live once. That's what's, that's what's up. I like that. And it's true. I mean, as far as we know, right? We only live once. Uh, uh, so I guess we maybe we can even talk about that tonight, right? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, who else do we have? We have Cosmic Joe Chronicles saying, you rock, Rob G. Appreciate you, Cosmic Joe Chronicles. You rock as well, uh, which is why I'm glad that you showed up tonight uh, for the show so we can go ahead and get this thing going. Uh, so appreciate you, Cosmic Joe Chronicles. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Going down the list here. Yep. Rafen stepped in the building. Hey, Rafen saying hi, Rob G in chat room. Everybody wave to Rafen. All right. We got uh, Brandon Coast. Uh, Rob G's bandana looking like you're prepping for war. Okay. 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 I can, I can see. That I can get that and I can apply that. And and yes, it it, it kind of feels like we are all prepping ourselves for war. Um spiritual war, I don't know. Uh a, a, a war humanity versus everyone else, right? Who knows? Uh potentially potentially we are prepping for war. Uh I don't know. We'll see where this goes. But thank you for coming on in, Brandon Coast. We appreciate you. And yeah, I forgot, right? Wildberry Candy Co. Uh, yes, saying happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there. Thanks for reminding me, Wildberry Candy Co. Um, yep, thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Okay, Mark Eddie saying hi, Rob, Michael, Hawes, Hawes, how? Okay. Howies, okay, and roomies. Thank you for coming on in, Mark Eddie. We do appreciate you. Uh, let's see who else do we have? We have Anna Boline. Anna Boline, uh, saying evening, everyone. Thank you for coming on in, Anna. We do appreciate you showing up tonight. We have Gory Tiger, Gory Tiger, saying, What's up? What's up, Gory Tiger? Thanks for showing up tonight. Let's get this thing going, right? Yeah, let's get it going on tonight. And see where the see where the night takes us. Uh, let's see who else do we got in here. We do have Raz Taz. Raz Taz, thank you so much for coming on in. Appreciate you showing up here tonight. And let's see, Poncho Zork. Poncho Zork saying hi, hello, Poncho Zork, right back at you. Thank you for coming on in. Uh, let's see who else do we got. Coming on into the after hours tonight. Uh, looks like we do have Paul Holland. Paul Holland, thank you so much for coming on in, saying hi all. Uh, appreciate you showing up here tonight. Uh, Doug Shelby saying, hey, everybody, I'm here finally. Captain Rob G, thank you for showing up, Doug Shelby. We do appreciate you, sir. Uh, let's get this thing going. Let's see, who else do we have? Further down the list, we're getting there, almost there, almost there. Let's see. Oh, my guy, my buddy, Tom King. Hey, Tom King, Mr. Phoenix Lights. Long time no see, buddy. We have to catch up, Tom King. Uh, stepping in the building. This gentleman filmed the Phoenix Lights, man. Can you believe that? We just talked about the uh, anniversary of the Phoenix Lights. And, and, and Tom must have heard, felt me talking about him because he is here tonight. And uh, we do appreciate you coming on in, Tom. Legend in the game right there. And uh, we do appreciate you coming in. We shall talk soon, Mr. King. We shall talk soon. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Who else do we get on our list here? I think we are caught up, are we? Let me see. Okay. Paramarv. Okay, Paramarv snuck in the building at the last minute there. Thank you so much for coming on in, Paramarv. 
yeah yeah a lot of great stuff uh going on like i said uh since tom is in the building um our guy roger murray did let us know about the anniversary of the phoenix lights and uh so it's been what that was 1997 we're looking at 27 years yeah yeah 20 27 years okay 27 years since the phoenix lights and once again, just like I said the other day, should be definitely considered one of those uh, White House on the UFO on the White House lawn moments. Uh, one of those ones in the book that you really can't deny when it comes to this confirmation process. Um, you know, very important one there. So with that being said, definitely want, want to welcome everybody uh, to come on in. Yep, Mike Rivers' longest intro ever. You got to get everybody, man. Can't leave anyone out, including you. So you are the final name uh, that we're calling out tonight, Mike Rivers. Thank you so much for coming on in. Um, we have a wonderful guest with us tonight. We have uh, Reverend Michael Carter. And we're going to bring him in right here right now because we were getting into some good stuff last time he was here. And we just had to make sure that we were going to continue the conversation, uh, which we're going to go ahead and do tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and bring on our guest of the night, Reverend Michael J. Carter. How you doing, Reverend? Hey, brother. I'm out. I'm past my bedtime, brother. I just want you to know that. <laughs> you, you, you keep me up, but I, I love being here. And thanks for everybody. Mark, thank you. It's always good to, to, to know you're in the house. And I just want to thank everybody for spending their evening. Definitely, definitely. And we do appreciate you bringing what it is you bring to uh, the conversation. Like we talked last time and, uh, you know, we, we, we got into it. And I asked the question because I was feeling that this whole conversation has been shifting towards, uh, you know, people are mentioning the spiritual side of it. We talked about that uh, yeah. on the last show. Um, where we left off is we wanted to kind of get into talking about uh, or, or referencing uh, the phenomena as it pertains to historical mentions in the Bible. And, uh, you know, I know you have some of, you know, is, is expertise there, obviously being a reverend, uh, knowing the scripture. I don't I'll say be the first one to say I'm not well, super well versed in uh, the scripture. I know of some of the entries and uh, kind of kind of leaning on you for that tonight and hoping yeah, that we can learn you from you tonight. Yeah. Well, um, I want to start off by saying um, that once you, um, once you acknowledge, once we acknowledge that we live in a populated universe, then you, 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 you it's inescapable that the way you look at God or non-God or whether you don't believe, it has to change. And I get um, many, many people who, after a podcast or after a show or something, people will reach out and they will say, can I still hold my religious faith and still believe in a populated universe? And my answer is, of course you can. Because before these monotheistic religions came about, our ancestors already knew about this. When we look at the Old Testament, when we look at the New Testament, when we look at the Quran, um, and, and other and other texts, I mean, and, and other oral traditions from our, our Native American brothers and sisters in Africa, in Norway, um, they believed in a populated universe. And so when we look at our scriptures, what we're looking at is an invasion. That's what we would call it today. When we, when we look at the Hindu scriptures, when they talk about the Vimanas, the flying machines, when, when our Native American brothers and sisters, First Nation people are talking about star people and the star nation. When we look at uh, the Mayan and the Popol Vuh, and they're talking about the gods Quetzalcoatl and 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 the other gods that they were worshiping, we're talking about an invasion where Earth was invaded. 
these beings took over certain parts of the earth, human beings, and they warred among themselves. And human beings got caught up into that. We call them the Elohim, the Nephilim, the Anunnaki. In Greek mythology, they're called the Titans. They're these giants. And they're fighting one another. They get drunk. They make love. They are jealous. There's some of them who are very um, helpful to human beings. Uh, so we don't want to just paint a broad brush. There, some of them are hybrids. Uh, when we look at the book of Enoch, when we have this mention in Genesis. So some of them wanted to keep us so, uh, uh, so ignorant we didn't know we were naked. When we look at the Garden of Eden, when we look at the Mesopotamian and the Akkadian, the Babylonian text, some of them come to help, as in Daniel 10, when he's in, you know, uh, he's in the lion's den. They help break Peter out of prison uh, 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 in, in Acts 10. They comfort Paul on the way to, uh, to Caesar, where he eventually uh, loses his life. And so we have this, um, this di these different levels of these beings. And they're all here on the planet. Some of them teach us astronomy, astrology. We look at the book of Enoch. They were cohabitating. They had wives. So it wasn't always wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We have in Genesis where uh, these beings are not only, they're eating all the food of the human beings, and then they start eating the human beings, and they carry on. Um, and so there's all these different layers of stories in our sacred literature and in oral traditions of our brothers and sisters on this planet that we have been occupied and we could argue that we still are. Yeah, pretty awesome there. You mentioned the book of Enoch um, and, and, and for a base level person like myself, uh, what are we talking about when we say book of Enoch? Is this found within the Bible? Or no, it was taken... No, I'm sorry, brother. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. Finish no, you're fine. No, I was going to say, just, is this uh, in the in the Bible or was this from an outside source? It was taken out of the Bible. Well, it, it didn't make the canon. You know, certain books made the canon and some didn't, uh, which is a political act. Um, the Book of Enoch was, was found in Ethiopia. Uh, you, you, you have to have a Book of Enoch. You must have the Book of Enoch. And it's mentioned... Um, Enoch is mentioned in Genesis, but the writer, when you read it, he just makes a brief comment. It's almost as if he expects his readers to know this story, but he mentions the book of Enoch. And here we have what we would call an experiencer. Some would call it an abduction, but Enoch was around 365 years old, we're told in the book of Genesis, when he was just taken away that he walked with God, he was righteous. So, okay, we, we know that the word Elohim should be there, not God singular. So he walked with the Elohim and they took him. He was a scribe. And he talks about in depth, Genesis 6, which says uh, that the sons of God, those who came down, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them, and they took them as wives, and they had children. So we're not talking about genetic manipulation, which we could be talking about with Mary and, you know, you know Miriam, Jesus's mom. We're, we're, we're talking about um, that, you, so there must be, so, you know, that, that there's something about these beings that we can mate with them. So they must be similar to us. There's got to be some chromosomes or something that go on where they can mate with earth women. And they, they had a hybrid race of giants. They had six digits. And uh, they were men of renown, the Bible tells us, okay? And they've been all through history. In Hebrew, they're the Nephilim. In the Babylonian, uh, Akkadian culture, Mesopotamia, where Genesis is using those stories, um, they're, they're called the Anu, the Anunnaki, talking about the same beings. And so they create a hybrid race. 
they create a hybrid race of giants. Now, Enoch, who is looking at life from a certain lens, he says these beings were evils. 200 of them came down. He gives some of the names of some of them. And he calls them fallen because they go against the, the I would call it a, um, a prime directive. You're not supposed to fraternize with the natives. And we see it in wars, right? We see it in Vietnam. We saw it in Korea. You go to war and you wind up falling in love and maybe you have some children. And that's not what usually that's frowned upon. That's not supposed to be what you're doing here. Keep your eye on the prize. But it happens. And some of these beings went crazy, as we read about in Genesis. And But some of them, when you read in Enoch, there seems to be a cultural exchange. There seems to be a cultural exchange. And what I mean by that is they taught human beings astronomy, astrology, how to work with crystals, how, how to work with cosmetics. Um, uh, 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 you know, so th it wasn't just this wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm sure it was with some of them, but there seems to be some type of exchange here because they cohabitated with them. So they were living here. They were living here. Taught them uh, how to make defensive weapons and offensive weapons. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Now, yeah, uh, um, Enoch says that this is all wrong, and it probably was because they did fraternize. And so some of them were, were, were destroyed. Some of them were hidden underground. Some of them went underground. Some of these beings probably went underground during the flood. Mm -hmm. Some of them could probably still be underground today. When we hear stories about experience saying, you know, that they're underground. I'm not just talking about bases, but I'm talking about some of these beings are isolated from humanity. But Enoch says that they, uh, they were cast down, they were exiled because they broke that rule. Again, which I call, I'm not saying they say this, uh, it was a prime directive. Maybe you were not supposed to get that close with earthlings. But when we read the story, when we read about Zeus, I mean, Zeus, uh, uh, had two sons by a woman. He abducted a, a, an earth woman, had two sons, I think three sons, but her name was Europa. Okay. And, right. and, 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 and you're, so the whole continent of Europe, the whole continent of Europe is named after this woman in Greek mythology who Zeus took for himself and had children from. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? The whole continent is named after this story, after this myth. Right. So all of these stories have to have some truth to them. They have to. This collective memory of our ancestors when the earth was, was occupied by who we would call today extraterrestrials. They walked among us. And the remnants of that we still feel today in our government, in our economics, in our foreign policy, uh, obviously in our religious life. And it's difficult to wrap your mind around because it seems like everything we were taught has been a lie. So anyway, the book of Enoch, I'm rambling is, is you, you must have this for your own research. And he goes into quite, you know, some great detail about, about these beings and, and what they did when they were on the earth. Now, you mentioned uh, so you, the Anunnaki and, and you know, I know a little bit about them. So it, this is something that predates the Bible then, right? I guess these are All some of, this, of the original yeah. writings. Okay. Yeah, 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 they do. They do. Uh, they, they, he calls them the watchers. Um, and and I'll, I'll get to that. There, there's a wonderful book you want to have. It's called the Apocryphal Old Testament. These are other books that were not 
uh, added to the canon, and they go into great depth. They, the Book of Enoch is in here, but they also are referred to as uh, uh, the Watchers, and it goes into more detail than the Bible. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Brother G, um, the, the, the book of Genesis is based on uh, the Mesopotamian text uh, of, of uh, Acadia, Babylon, um, and they they talk about Enki and Elil, Enlil, who Zachariah Sitchin talks about, and they had no problem uh, uh, talking about it. They were not embarrassed by it, as were not the Hindus, talking about the Vimanas and their flying machines. They weren't making them God stories. Uh, uh, they were just talking about these beings. They weren't talking about an omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God. They were talking about these beings who came here and uh, lived among us. We start getting into God stories when the ancient Hebrews start talking about this. And we'll go into that, I'm sure, in the time that, that we have. But a, a lot of people leave religion, they left religion, because they said, I can't reconcile this God of the Bible with my own moral compass. I mean, this guy is committing genocide. He's killing, he's having men, women, and children killed. He wants to start drown everybody and start all over. I don't uh, uh, get into a deity like that either. Definitely the different entity than what Jesus is talking about thousands of years later. But when we go into the mistranslation that that God is, that Zachariah's Stitchin standing on his shoulders, a lot of people use Zachariah's, uh, Mr. Stitchin's work, but they don't give him credit. Um, but when we, when we translate Elohim as plural instead of singular, we start to see that these are not this is not a God. This is a person from somewhere else, the Elohim, the ones who came down. The powerful ones is the root word. You don't have to know Hebrew. Uh, uh, all right. you have to do is remember that wherever you see the word Lord or God, that is usually translated as the root word is the powerful ones, but it's Elohim, then you get it that this is not a loving a uh, forgiving, merciful, uh, joyous God. This is a warrior entity from somewhere else. And that changes, that, because what, you can't go back to reading the Bible the same way. The, the idea of God is in the Old Testament. It's in there. But I would tell you from start to finish, we are talking about today. Our ancestors didn't have words for it. And the technology was overwhelming, but we would say this is an invasion. And our ancestors are talking about uh, beings from elsewhere who are, are, are technologically um, awe-inspiring. And they were trying to tell us about uh, covert government, about colonization, about having us paying, praying, and obeying. Mm -hmm. um, and they were trying to navigate that uh, because what could they do? These beings were gods. Right. Or godlike. How far is this going back? So, I mean, obviously starting with the the Sumerian uh, tablets, the emerald tablets, is that what they are? Are those the same? They're, they're, mentioned, okay. they're, those, they're mentioned there. Yeah. This goes back to prehistory. This goes back to, to prehistory. Um, so, so what date can you give? Because civilizations have risen and fallen. I've been studying Plato lately, um, and Plato um, believed in a god, but he didn't believe in God, a, a human, you know, an anthropomorphic god. He believed in what we talk about today, more quantum physics, that there was this intelligence, and we all come from that intelligence that we live in a fractalized universe. And so we are parts of that intelligence and we go back to that intelligence because he believed in reincarnation and what have you. But he also said, 
uh, where he talked about the book Atlantis. He talked about Atlantis, and he said he got his information from another Greek scholar who got his information from uh, a high priest from uh, Egypt who talked about the continent of Atlantis. He talks about it in his books, uh, Timaeus and Critias. And um, he talked about cycles and that every 5,000 years, every 6,000 years, there is an um, extinction level event, a flood. Maybe a meteor hits us. And that, and that great civilizations like Atlantis have come and gone. There was Atlantis. Some people talk about Lemuria. But Plato said that every 5,000 years, this happens, and humankind starts all over again. We go to ground zero, and we start, we could be living in one of these cycles now. And, and he talks about these beings who come down and kind of jumpstart us. We see it in Genesis. When, when we read Genesis, what is, when, one of the first things you notice is that the earth is already here. It's not created. It's already here. It's, right. it's, 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 it's void. And so um, then, then the waters are being separated, right? You got the, from the dry land. So that sounds like terraforming to me, that you separate the salt water from the fresh water. You, you, you separate um, the dry land from the... So it seems like there's already been some type of event that has happened. And then you have the sons of God who come down. And, and, and so you have this hybridization going on with them mating with. But something has already happened in Genesis. And so these beings come down. And so I was trying to, to hook that up with Plato, who says there's always a cataclysm. So there's, there, there perhaps was more than one flood. But, but, every, but all these civilizations remember it. Whether you're in Japan, whether you're in the Mesopotamian era, whether you're in uh, 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 the G Genesis, the book, th something had happened and we had to reboot and start all over again. If you go into Genesis 11, when we talk about, for instance, the Tower of Babel and uh, uh, Zachariah Sitchin talks about this. Of course, we have it translated as this great high-rise building. That 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 they're building this this high, a tower up to heaven. Uh, that doesn't make sense. This is not housing. This is not about Section Eight or, or high-rise buildings. Uh, 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 Zachariah Sitchin calls it. Uh, they were building a shem, which is in Hebrew, uh, 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 a rocket ship. But whatever it was, we must have we must have progressed techno technologically to be able to build this. Whatever it was, whether you say, well, Michael, Zachariah is a little far out. And OK, whether you say it was a building or it was a launch pad for a ship, the gods say. Look at these people. They're out of hand. It's, we, if they do this, there's nothing they won't be able to do. We need to stop this. I'm paraphrasing, but you can go read the story. So whatever it was, it was threatening enough to the gods, or as they say in the Bible, the Lord, who says, and, and you have to say, well, who's he talking to? We need to stop this. These people are out of hand. And so what do they do? Of course, they destroy it, but they go down and meddle with the languages so we can't communicate with each other. Hmm. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? So are the, I mean, everything is, that we understand is under God, right? Is everything God is on top, everything is beneath. So uh, is that how these extraterrestrials, is that when they're referenced in like those old, the Sumerian writings, are they referenced as that, as something that's under God or... How, you know, what, how are they looked at? What, look, you know, what, what are they looked at like? Well, 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 you want to be careful with the word God. If you're saying gods, it has to be plural. Because again, there's no really talk about, there is, there is no Hebrew word for a being that is omnipresent, 
omniscient. Omni There's not even a, a word for that. Elohim is the oldest Hebrew word in the Bible. But it's a great question because they served as judges. They served as high priests. They served as rulers. When these beings came, and some of them kind of jump-started uh, civilization. Uh, Asherah is talked about in the Bible, a female who's supposed to be the consort of Yahweh, but they loved her. There's all these uh, uh, um, uh, altars in the Bible. Jeremiah talks about it because they're all Yahwist, uh, dedicated to Asherah. And, and he's upset that, that they're not, that, that, what, 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 no, Yahweh's the one. You want to, to want to be worshiping. You don't want to be worshiping these other gods. But when you look at when civilization gets started, you look at the king's list, right, in the Sumerian king's list, and you look at the uh, king's list of the um, of the Egyptians, and you see that these beings are ruling for two hundred thousand years. A hundred, you know, you can't be human and rule that long, right? So. Then they have children. They have hybrid children. So they back off. They leave the earth. They go underground. They back off. So they leave this, 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 these rule, they leave the people under their sons. It was usually sons. So now you got hybrid children ruling. Okay? Then when they start to leave, they appoint priests, Samuel, Moses, a lot of these prophets and what have you. And how do you think human beings are going to rule? They're going to rule the same way they saw the gods rule. Right. So some of these people were benevolent and they ruled justly. They were good kings. And some of them we're tyrants because power, when you get a little power, there's a, what's the old saying? The higher a monkey climbs, the more he shows us, you know what? <laughs> yeah. And so these beings, I'm, I'm a clergy person. You can trace this all the way back. We became the spokesperson for the gods. We became the anointed ones. We became the ones with all the answers. So you have to go through me to get to, so you have a hierarchy, which is what you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. So you have, um, and, and you, you have the gods at the top until he, um, the Hebrews came. Then you had one God. You had God, the emperor or king. You had all the high priests and the, the, the ministers and the military and what have you. And then you had the everyday people. So we have that hierarchy today. So, when, when in the sixth and seventh century, when they were rewriting the Old Testament, King Hezekiah and his grandson Josiah, they were Yahwehs. They didn't want you worshiping everyone, uh, other people. We'll tell you what's fake news. We'll tell you uh, uh, you don't need these other gods. Yahweh said, "We don't. I don't even want to. I don't even want you to depict these. Uh, I don't want any paintings. I don't want any statues because there were other gods." The good thing is that civilization got it jumps got jump started. Asherah, you know, taught, taught how to make beer, what plants were good for you, what plants were poisonous, those types of things. But now you got now now you got land. This is land. So when you got someone ruling over land, Michael, you're the king now. We're going back up on the ship. We're leaving it to you. You're running it. Here's a little Ark of the Covenant. Call us if you need us. So now you got a king. You got land. Later on, you get a banking system. You start learning how to do agriculture, those types of things. But guess what? Now you got land, so now you got people who don't have land. Now you get a banking system, but now you got people who don't know how to, who don't have the resources. So you see how these hierarchies of power come. Mm -hmm. And you have this pyramid structure, which we have today. The Romans had it. There was the gods, and the emperor, some of the Roman emperors were considered gods, so they could trace their lineage back. Then you had um, 
one god or a pantheon, one emperor, one temple, one high priest. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Why? Why would they do that? Simple, because it's easier to rule. Yeah. It's easier to rule. I can't rule you if you're worshiping all these other gods or paying tribute to other these other gods. There's one king, me, or there's one emperor. There's one high priest. There's one temple. It's in Jerusalem. You come pay your taxes there. And you see how this model of power has come all the way down to modern times. Where do we know how to make warfare with each other? I used to hate to hear that when I was on podcasts or with other people, because to me, it made it seem like human beings, you know, the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. The, you know, it's not me. I learned this from the extraterrestrials made me do it. But as I started doing more research and just listening, I had to say, you know what? These brothers and sisters may be right because we were we were fighting. We were picking sides. Or, or either we were we were told who we would fight for. When you look at the Hindu scriptures, these gods are fighting among themselves. But who's fighting with them? Human beings. You see it in the Bible. Abraham, Samuel, Saul. They're fighting with Yahweh. Wow. And if you didn't, there'd be hell to pay. Because these people fought among themselves. But again, uh, before you ask your next question, that's not the, the entire story. Uh, uh, when we get into angels and, and these messengers and stuff, some of them came and helped us out. Some of them came and showed us how to do things. When you look at indigenous cultures, if you look at the Pope of Vu, the Mayan book, the Pope of Vu, um, they talk about these beings. Again, some of the beings wanted us to see where Project Earth was going to go. Let's see what human beings are going to do. And some of us just wanted to keep us as just good help which is Enki and Aleel and the Samaritan, so, you know, with the gold, let's get the gold. They need to repair their atmosphere, that kind of thing. And um, uh, uh, there's there's a, a, a section of the Popol Vuh when the gods are saying these beings, they are noisy. They breed like rabbits. That's basically what they were saying. We need to do something about these folks. And what they do is they, they get in their ships and they spray a mist over the earth. Sound familiar? Right. And it kind of dumbs us down. Kind of dumbs us down a little bit. So in order to look at the future, we've got to look at the past. Not be stuck in the past, but we have to learn. We have to learn from it. Our ancestors were trying to tell us this. They were trying to tell us to look out for hidden hands in your government. Look out for hidden hands in your foreign policy. Look out for when you when you when, when I was in the when I was when you were introducing everybody. I, I, this is the, the thing I was looking for, so I can give people more chapters and verses. If you look in First Kings twenty-two, not now, but if you got pens and paper. 13 to 18, there's a prophet, Micaiah, not, not Micah, who says, what does the Lord require of you to do justice, love, mercy, walk well, humbly, not him. He remote views, that's the way we would use today, a heavenly council. This is 1 Kings 22, verses 13 to 28. And it's called a heavenly council. I call it a federal, galactic federation, but they're all sitting around. And they're trying, Yahweh or the Lord is trying to um, start a war. And a spirit comes up. They don't say it's an angel. They say a spirit says, I can start this war by putting a lie into the mouth of one of the prophets. And the Lord, whoever's the 
head of this council says, make it so. Well, I was not taught to look at the Bible like that. I was not taught that. You, If you look at Deuteronomy 32, 8, Yahweh, you, you, it says there that these gods are given land. Yahweh gets the tribe of Jacob. The trouble with what Yahweh got was that, you know, when you get the land, you get the people on it. But Yahweh doesn't have any land which is why he goes into the land of Canaan and other places, and he takes land. What kind of God needs human beings to take land for them? Right. You don't have to be a biblical scholar to figure that out. And Yahweh doesn't get all of the Hebrew people. In 32.8, he gets, he gets the lineage of Jacob. Because remember, these tribes were fighting among themselves, the Hittites, the Amor Amorites. They were fighting among themselves because they had different gods. They had Baal. They had Kamish. They had Asherah. They had Do uh, uh, Dagon. These are all extraterrestrials. If you look in, um, if you look at uh, Daniel 10, verse 13. Dan, an angel comes to Daniel and he says, I'm, I'm late. It took me three weeks to get here because I was battling with the king of Persia, who was probably an extraterrestrial. I had to wait for Michael, the angel Michael. I had to wait for Michael to come before I could get to you. It's right there in Daniel 10, 13. Do these sound like gods to you, a god to you? He said, it took me 21 days. They're fighting among themselves over Project Earth. Yeah, so I wanted to know because, you know, well, are stop there... Stop me, brother, because I talk. I get, no, I talk and I, I, I need you to talk because I'm, I'm, I need to absorb this, and I'm writing down the scriptures that you're mentioning, too, as well. Um, is there a reference, is there a point in time... Because it sounds like uh, the interactions that are mentioned are uh, recollections of these things from outside of here, from some other place, coming here, and then the story is being told. But is there a mention that, because you have some people out there that make the claim that we are them, they are us, and we're like one in the same. So uh, is is there a point where it's referencing that whatever someone considers God, this higher power, that we're all up under that? Or or are these things belonging to a separate, you know, hierarchy as far as it goes when we talk about the highest power, right? Are we all under the one highest power? Or is there some sort of division there? Like, because every time when I'm, and when I'm reading these other scriptures that I have listed, it, it it mentioned like for this one, and maybe I'm just reading this one wrong, but um, uh, this one is, and maybe it's not even referring to it, but it's Ephesians 2.19, uh, where it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Well, you're talking thousands of years later when you get to Ephesians. Man. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, you're talking. You're talking. Um, I'm looking at what you're saying, but see, you you want to put it in context. I'm looking at two thirteen. I'm looking at the Aramaic translation. Translation, but now through Jesus Christ, you who sometimes were far off are brought near by the blood of Christ. Is that what you're looking at? I mean, you probably got a different translation, but let let's let's deal with your question. Um. We don't get an idea of God the way you're talking about it until Acts 17, when, and, uh, when Paul is talking to a non-religious audience in Athens. He's talking to Greek, to a Greek-speaking audience. And he defines God as where we live, where we move, and where we have our being. Now, that's Platonic thought, but that is thousands of years later and what you know what you notice about that is that he's not talking about a santa claus up in the sky it's kind of abstract 
God is where we live and move and have our being. Like this, this energy is all around us. But you don't get that till centuries later. Even when, if you go to Ephesians six thirteen, where uh, all the Christians like to talk about, um, uh, now I'm, I'm reading the Aramaic, but it says um, uh, you put on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to eleven through 13, 11 through twelve. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For your conflict is not only with flesh and blood. So it's not only with flesh and blood beings because remember some of these some of these beings are flesh and blood but the conflict is with angels with powers with the rulers of this world of darkness and with the evil spirits under the heavens so there's they're even saying there that there's 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 so much life out there they're angels they're spirits they're human beings, flesh and blood. Some of these angels have fle are flesh and blood too because Sarah and Abraham feed them in, 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 in the Genesis story. So they're telling you it's a whole bunch of folk out there that we're dealing with. Evil spirits uh, uh, in the heavens, flesh and blood, angels with other powers. So our ancestors knew that the universe was teeming with life. Yeah. In... Um, I mean, it's right there. Uh, when, when, when I was mentioning before we were, okay, 1 Kings 22, 13 to 28, Micaiah remote views a heavenly council. I mentioned that, and they want a false flag operation in, 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 in Hebrew and in foreign policy. Could be Yahweh, they say the Lord, but you just put Elohim. But remember, Yahweh was an Elohim. So, and if you read it, Micaiah says a spirit steps forth, doesn't say an angel, this could have been an energy being. Uh, he doesn't say an angel, he doesn't say a demon, he just says a spirit steps, because the, the, the council, whoever's heading the council says, who's going to go down and make this happen so we can start this war? These false flags that we have today. And, uh, and, and he writes a spirit steps forth because he's seeing this. He's remote viewing this. He's not there in the council. He's not with the Federation. He's seeing this. And uh, he says a spirit steps forth and says, I will put a lie in the mouth of this prophet. So you got beings being manipulative. Right? You've got beings who are maybe maybe it's an art what we call an archon maybe it's an energy being maybe it's invisible but it is a live uh, um, intelligence who says I'll do it send me down I'll take care of it and they say make it so yeah you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of different viewpoints on, and especially when we talked originally uh, the first time on how, uh, you know, the, the viewpoint of those within religion is pretty important right now, trying to understand how it is that they view uh, the us being visited by extraterrestrials. And that's kind of why we're going over what we're going over today, because, uh, those things end up being referenced. So I guess in this next hour, we can try to see because I want to uh, uh, try to paint the picture of why. So when it comes down to disclosure in the moment that we run into this, looking back in these scriptures, why it is uh, going to be either OK and this, you know, uh, religion will uh, ride the wave with us or versus I guess there's a segment that looks at this still as something that that uh you know isn't explainable by the Bible, I guess. And I, I guess I can clarify that uh when I yeah, ask you the question in hour two. Yeah, I'm a little confused yeah. about that. I'll I'll ask you that. So what we're gonna do real quick here is we're gonna pause for the cause, take mm -hmm. our first break of the night, and then we'll be right back uh with Reverend Michael Carter. So you guys hang tight and we'll be right back. Get your questions ready too. We'll be right back.
All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Space Style Radio. After hour number two with me, your host, Mr. Rob G. And we're welcoming back our fantastic guest, Reverend Michael J. Carter. Um, so uh, real quick, though, before we jump back into this, I just want to talk to the space travelers real quick. You're already space travelers. Go ahead. To, uh, consider taking the next step and join the club. That's right. You can join our SOR Space Travelers Club for as little as five dollars per month by joining our Patreon. And for the audience members out there real quick, uh, and I'll save this comment here because I thought it was funny and uh, you were in the middle of talking. But uh, we had this message that popped up, says, who has better chin hair, Reverend Michael or Sweet Robbie G? And everybody out there, I think, thinks I put the mess that message out there. That was Dave Scott, guys. So Dave Scott put this uh, message in the chat, uh, put that poll out there. So just so you know, Dave is out there lurking tonight. And uh, yeah, so Mr. Dave Scott wanted to know who had the better chin here. I'm going to give it to Reverend Michael Carter because he's got the distinguished salt and pepper uh, look going there. And, you know, I just have the, the I, I don't know what hey, you want to call it. Don't, <laughs> hey, brother, it, look, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. Well, you, you're a handsome man. We move on. No, oh, there we go. There we go. You're so with that, man. with that being said, it's, it's I asked good. right before, uh, Right before we went to break, I was trying to articulate what it was I was saying. So, yeah. uh, so we had the look, the outlook from the outside uh, when when the question is posed about uh, how those within religion uh, either are accepting or not accepting what it is the, the revelations that we're going through now. So you have, for instance, I guess Catholics who have always, I guess, been in on the idea that what what we're going over today, the scriptures definitely outline and point to, you know, uh, the possibility of these things uh, being mentioned and being inclusive in everything that's considered under a God or a higher power. But then you have at the same time, and I'm not sure which religion this is, but there's a subset of religion that is saying uh, no aliens aren't a part of anything that's within the Bible. These what we're seeing here are we're, we're seeing demons, right? So how is it that they're interpret? They're reading the same scriptures. How is their interpretation so different from what the Catholics are saying? Being so open to what it is well, we're talking about today. Well, listen, listen, we could we listen. You and I could be walking down the street and we see an accident. And we would see that accident in very different ways. When pe people can read, well, first of all, um, they're, they're, they may not be using a really, really good Bible. <clears throat> the, New the New Jerusalem Interlinear is a good Bible. Uh, the RSVP. See, the Bibles that are sold to families are different than Bibles that are sold to scholars. You're reading very different Bibles. And so you're getting different translations. New Jerusalem Bible, what I like about that Bible is it will say if in a footnote, well, this is the wrong translation, or we really don't know what that word means. But you can't read the King James. You can't be reading uh, these other Bibles because they, they they make everybody sound like they're in a Shakespearean play, number one, and then mm. the worst translations you can have. That's number one. You don't have time to go out and get a crash course in Hebrew or Aramaic. I forgot a lot of the Hebrew, but I know enough. But what I'm saying is you don't have to even know the Hebrew. All you have to do is you have to, to learn that where Elohim is the oldest word there, and Elohim is plural. That's number one. Number two is don't get into the translations. Just watch what the, what read, just let it stay there and read what happens in the text. You know, you don't have to transfer. If you see the Lord told so-and-so to go into here and slaughter those people, you don't have to know any language. You have to go, what? This is the God I'm supposed to worship? That You know what I'm saying? 
You, that, that's all you really have to do to get that because you're going to argue with people about translations and it's not going to make sense and you're not going to change people. There are people in our government who don't want disclosure because their theological uh, perspective is that these are demons. Okay? There are people in government who want the disclosure because they may say, no, they're not all demons. You're not going to really change that. People read the scriptures. It helps if you know a language. And I'm putting this in a context. But for what we're talking about, about ancient astronauts, even if you don't know, when someone says, man, I'm seeing flying chariots. I was looking in a Flavia, reading the works of Josephus the other day, uh, preparing for this show. And you read chapter six in the work of Josephus, book five. And he's saying at the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, 70 years after the crucifixion of Yeshua, there were flying chariots over the skies in Jerusalem. Okay? When you go read about the story of Europa, they talk about there was a statue to Zeus and it had horses with wings on it and Zeus was in the chariot. Ray Charles can see that these people are trying to tell you that these beings flew. I don't care if you are evangelical. Now, I think it's progress. When I was talking about this 25 years ago, people told me to stand down. And my evangelical brothers and sisters said, that's blasphemy, that's heresy, you're a nut. Now, what a difference 25 years makes. They say, okay, Reverend Carter, you got a point, but they're demons. Well, okay, I'm just thankful that at least you got it. But And some of them behave like that. But, but surely the angel who came to to Elizabeth, Miriam's cousin, John the Baptist's mom, that wasn't a demon. Surely the, 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 the person who came to Miriam and said, you're blessed by God, surely that's not a demon. Surely uh, 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 the, the, the angel who releases Peter from prison is, come on, man. Now, the Catholic Church has done some things haven't we all, that it should be ashamed of themselves, okay? Well, we all have, okay. But in 2009, Pope Benedict the 16th, and I'm not Catholic, I'm always fascinated how the workings of that church that lasted all this time, he said that we shouldn't be uh, surprised that there are extraterrestrials in the Bible. I'm like, what? 400 years, you were burning people at 400 years ago, you were burning people at the stake for saying that. So now they're just saying, God was a little busier than we thought. And so you shouldn't be surprised. Then you got um, the late, I raised an eyebrow. Then you got the late uh, exorcist, uh, Corrado Baladucci. He came out and said, people, experiencers who are saying that they have seen these beings, they're not psychotic, they're not mentally disturbed, they're not seeing demons, and we need to take it. This is the Catholic Church saying this in 2009. I think 2008 or 2009, it, it, Pope Benedict, conservative, said that you should not use the name of Yahweh. Yahweh is not a Christian name. Okay? Now, I thought people would say, what are you talking about? Nobody said anything. And now, you first I said, well, it's not a Hebrew name. I mean, it's not a Christian name. It's a Hebrew name. But it's really not a Hebrew name because it was even before, uh, this was before uh, Hebrew was a language. But what he was saying is, that this is not a God, the way we look at God. The Catholic Church said this. This is disclosure. That's called disclosure. Now, we I argue that we're in disclosure now. It's just nobody, no emperor, 
I don't care whether it's Trump or Biden or whoever's going to be emperor, RFK, I don't know. But nobody's going to come out on the White House lawn and say, folks, let me tell you, we've been lying to you for 70 plus years. Not only have we been lying to you, we've been in contact with these people for millennia. And I'm sorry to tell you, some people lost their lives. We had we had to we had to liquidate some people because they knew too much. Who's going to say that? They, oh, 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 you know, by the way, uh, Eisenhower may have signed a treaty with these folks, but that's treason. That's treason. Who's going to say that right. and risk their political careers? Now, what we could do, what we could do is we could do what Brother Tutu and Mandela and those folks did after apartheid. We could have a Truth and Reconciliation Committee and if there's any government people up tonight listening to this, I don't have to get credit for it. But well, if we want to get truth, we can say, look, things happened. We can't change that. But we're not going to take your, your retirement. We're not going to take your tenure as long as you give us the truth. Come forward with what you know. It worked in South Africa because otherwise... I don't trust my government to give me disclosure when they've been lying to me all these years. We're, we're, you know, it doesn't make sense. We're asking the same people who've been lying to us to tell, give, give me disclosure. Right now, yeah. right now, I mean, that, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right now, uh, uh, the only people talking about this are the, the military, but they're only looking at it at, from a tech point of view and national security. I get that. That's what their job is. But there are experiencers out here who could bring another voice to the table, more that more about uh, ec ecological awareness, what we're doing to the planet, more about that we're probably going to need a spiritual change that's going to transcend religion. Otherwise, we're going to kill each other. But we're not looking at that. We're just saying... We don't, we're whistleblowers, we're going to shut down. We're going to keep everything a secret. We don't want China getting this tech. They probably have it. We don't want Russia. They probably have it. We know we have it. We know Israel has it. They're looking at it from this archaic way, and we're going to blow ourselves up. Unless Plato was right, so before we blow ourselves up, we're going to get hit by a meteor, or there's going to be some type of ecological disaster, which probably happens, like he says, every five, 6,000 years. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. There are beings, hi, I'm a shed, hold on, Christmas 2020. You, you got me started, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold back. Brigadier <laughs> General Haim Mashed for 27 years. He was Israel's chief of space security. Okay, 27 years. Yeah. He said that we have been in contact with these civilizations for 70 plus years. So if you do the math, where does that take you to? Eisenhower and Truman. Right. He says that there is a galactic federation. He says that their base is on Mars and the moon. And, and no one locked him up. No one sedated him. No one put him in a loony bin. He said that there are extraterrestrials who don't want disclosure until we are advanced enough technology. They didn't say conscious wise. I wish they had. But he has said this. There are extraterrestrials who don't want us to have disclosure as yet. Edgar Mitchell w was arguing that we should have disclosure. Paul Hellyer, uh, 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 who was the brother um, who retired, the French head of the C of their CIA, uh, Alain Juliet was saying this. This is disclosure. Hector Elizondo's talking about it now. Brother Grush came out and talked about it now. Jacques Vallée. That's disclosure. They're telling you, I've been working on this, uh, 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 the, the infrastructure. I've been back engineering. Nobody locked them up. Nobody locked them up. But we want it to happen a certain way. It's coming out drip by drip by drip. Of course it would. But no one's going to get out there and say, hey, man, uh, we, because you know, people died, man. When, right. when, people, people, people knew too much. They got hurt. They're not going to talk about Eisenhower. They, look, in 2008, Dmitry Medvedev, he's a, a, one of um, 
one of uh, Putin's um, uh, thugs. Uh, uh, he was chairman of the Security Council of the Russian Federation on a hot mic. 2008 on a hot mic. He said that each prime minister of Russia gets a dossier detailing the spacefaring civilizations we're in contact with. Wow. Nobody, nobody locked him up. Putin right. didn't say, are you crazy? No, it just went on. Nobody paid attention to it. Okay, Christopher Mellon's trying to do stuff now. Hector Elizondo is on. That's called disclosure. For the Pope to come out and say, for, for, for uh, uh, Baladucci to come out and say, for the brother of, of, of Funes, he's the head of the, uh, he was the head of the Vatican, um, I think, observatory. He came out and said, in order for these priests to come out and say this, the Pope had to say, go on. You can't just you can't just say that after you sign all these security and, and non-disclosure things. That's called disclosure. It's just not happening the way we want it to happen, and you can't expect it to. But that's called Gary Nolan. I mean, he's pretty much come out and said, you know, he's working on uh, um, these projects. He's working. That's disclosure. Right. But because it's not happening the way we want it to happen. And, and 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 listen, uh, uh, Steve Bassett and those brothers who do that. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I, that, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not trying to knock them. They're, they're trying. They're, they're, they're trying to do it in a different way, where we want them to come out and say, "Yes, we've been lying." I don't know. Eric Davis, the American physicist, he's working with the Pentagon. He's talking about. Uh, he's back engineering stuff. I mean, I mean, how how plain do you want it? How plain do you want it? They're not going to come out and say it, but but these things, these are not accidents. These are not accidents. Yeah, Paul Hellyer, yeah. the late Paul Hellyer, the brother, he was up, uh, up in Canada, the politician there. He died. He said, we've been in touch with all these civilizations and that some of them are still here. These are high ranking uh, 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 political officials. Right. It's not Michael Carter. Michael, uh, we saw you in Ancient Aliens. Uh, tell us about it. No, these are people who have juice. Right. And nobody got locked up. Nobody got poisoned. Nobody had to go into a shift and told. No. It was okay. Right. All right. Was... You said it. Yeah, and it's going to be okay. And that's the point of that, right? But... We had, uh, you were talking a moment ago, and I had a question from an audience member. Uh, you had mentioned Plato. Uh, Montauk is Strange submitted this question and said, uh, Dr. Reverend Carter, what do you think of the Rishat structure versus Plato's checkli checklist of Atlantis details? I will say I, I haven't seen the Rishat structure, but... Um, uh, I will I will look it up probably tomorrow because tonight is getting kind of late. But um, I've always believed Plato. I've always um, uh, just intuitively believed that this um, this civilization existed, along with many others who uh, have come and gone. And some of them are underwater. Some of them are under the earth. Maybe some of them are under the ice. But what we're finding out with Quebecki Tepe and other archaeological sites, that there were many civilizations before ours that come and go, which is pretty humbling because we think so much of our empire today. But um, thank you for letting me know about that. But I'm, 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 in my heart of hearts, I believe that Plato got the information from uh, the, the Egyptians and they were telling uh what they knew about this continent of Atlantis that was highly advanced, uh, that was probably inhabited by off-world intelligences as well as humans. Yeah, and Monta Montauk is strange. I uh, agrees with you 100% on that. Um, I was going to say, 
if you go, if you looking out into, uh, from our perspective, looking outwards, obviously our perspective is, is that everything that we see created, everything even out in the universe is a product of this higher power, uh, who, whatever you may want to call it. Do you feel like, uh, and obviously you wouldn't know for sure, but would you feel like, uh, religion translates across the the galaxy across the solar system do you think no that it doesn't it, it doesn't, doesn't, apply? It doesn't okay no no because if you read billy meyer stuff or even uh well, a lot of billy meyer stuff but they think uh the palladians think it's all superstition they don't believe in a trinity um and i'm talking about western thought now because you know there's many different perspectives um and they see that religion can well, you can look at the planet and see what religion's doing. If you look at Ukraine, if you look at um, what's going on in Israel and Gaza, all those people worship Yahweh, man. Yeah. They all worship a warrior God. So, you know, it's always about revenge. It's about, and I'm not saying there's easy, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not with the UN. I'm not saying they're easy answers, easy answers. But those, you know, when you worship a God who says an eye for an eye, then you're going to have that kind of stuff. Right. When you know, and this is what I was saying earlier, we fight over land. We fight over uh, for power. My experience has been that people don't want to fight. It's the leaders who want to fight. I remember when I was in Jerusalem back in the 90s for vacation, and I saw Palestinian people getting along. I saw intermarriage. I was at a couple bars carrying on. With, with people who were Arab and Israel. We were drinking and laughing and lollygagging. Most people want peace. It's the leaders who put us in the middle. Well, where'd you learn that from? The gods. The gods. Because we were fighting wars for and with the gods. When you, when you you What's that World War I story where that Christmas, I forget it, but it's a very famous true story where uh, the Germans were fighting the British and these working class. Germans and British, they didn't want to kill each other. So on Christmas night, they went out, they smoked cigarettes. They probably had a little alcohol. They played soccer. They had Christmas carols. But the leaders said that will never, ever, ever happen again. Sort of like Enoch. That's the problem. You know what I mean? Sort of. And the next day, they were killing each other wholesale. The people wanted peace. Right. It's the leaders. For whatever reason, for false flags, as we saw with the prophet uh, M M Micaiah. Uh, uh, you know, we, we want what we want. Right. Yeah, I've always said that if you left up to the people uh, to make the decision and said, hey, do do. Do we need nuclear weapons? Chances are the answer is no. So, yeah, I mean, it's, there's this small group of people who have that warmongering, uh, power-hungry sort of approach to, or perspective, rather, uh, of what it is that's going on here, or and, and, and uh, a pr approach as well, because that's how they apply, uh, try to answer any of the questions out there using force and that whole mindset. But... Um, we, I had a question here actually for, uh, let's see, president Zaddy. And I wanted, in, in, I guess you'll answer this. I'll just ask you, is, is heaven a planet? And then I'll probably take that a little further in, in what do you consider or think of heaven to be? Is heaven a, a location? Uh, is, is there in the way that we think of a heaven and hell, do those two things apply in your view uh, of religion? And I don't know if you can answer that. I, the short answer is I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if heaven is a planet. It may be another dimension. Right. It, it may be another planet. I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I wish I knew, but I don't know. I'll find out. I don't have any past life memories of it. I, I would think that heaven is probably, a di you vibrate on a different um, uh, frequency and that it's probably a different. And the only reason I say that is that if we look at 
NDEs, um, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences. What's always fascinating to me is that if a Hindu dies, they see Krishna. If a Christian dies, they see Jesus. If a Muslim dies, they see Muhammad. If a Buddhist dies, they say Buddha. Right. If an atheist dies, they, they go down the tunnel. I mean, we all go through this tunnel. And they, you know, if you live and you come back. So it's interesting that your belief system influences what you see. True. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's just interesting. I'm not saying that's gospel truth, but these are scientific studies and tests that have done. But I, I don't know if heaven is a planet. So in my view of it, and, and uh, I feel like, and, and I'll tell you why, I feel like when we talk about heaven, I consider heaven as the heavens is what they speak of everything that we see out there. So the whole, you know, uh, if, if potentially dark matter, uh, space, like the energy that propels the universe, like everything we see out there is, is what I consider to be the heavens because then it makes sense uh, that w when, when they say the God created the heavens and everything in it, it would, it would include solar systems, galaxies, planets, living beings on whatever planet this may be. I'm one that feels like that everything we see out there is under under a creator or a group of creators, however you want to look at it, look at that. But then when I think about that, then I say, okay, then what if that's the case, then what could be perceived as hell then, right? Because that that's kind of where I get stuck at. So I don't know if you have anything that you could add to, to help me work through that because I'm just trying to figure out uh, for myself, you know, when we talk about heaven as being this place that everyone wants to go or should want to go versus a hell, a uh, purgatory or whatever, somewhere where you can be cast off uh, to burn in the eternal fire of flame. Um, like what would make sense as far as a hell? What would... If if we looked around and we tried to perceive what a hell was, is there see, anything see, that you could put to that? No, see, I think what you're doing is uh, there's a wonderful book called uh, The Origin of Satan by scholar Elaine Pagels, where she gets into this in more depth. It's not okay. UFO related. Um, but but I think what's happening is you're looking for one answer to serve all. And that's why I gave the 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 the. Um, Example of different people having different ex having different experiences, because mm -hmm. I don't know if there is one. what I hear you saying is, can you give us a definition of hell that's going to be universal? And I can't. Yeah, because studies yeah. have shown that it may be different for everybody. Some people don't experience hell at all. Some people say we're living in hell here. Some people say hell is between our ears. And so I think it's a different experience. So what you're saying, this will give you, Elaine's book will give you um, a kind of history of how that, that concept came about. But you have to decide for yourself and, 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 and see uh, you know, with, with with this all this information, you know, uh, when Jesus was crucified and uh, he uses the word Gehenna uh, before he dies about this, the burning fires of hell. But that was a long time ago. He could have been speaking figuratively. You have to the thing with this is the thing. And that's why I can say I don't know, because I don't know. And that's, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and BS you. I can speculate. But the thing with living in a populated universe, now that you know that we are not alone, you, and not just you, brother, but you, me, you have to figure out what is God? What does that mean to me? Mm -hmm. Is there a God? And, and, and a lot of people don't want to take that journey. A, it's mind bending. It's awe-inspiring, but it's heavy. But they want someone to tell them, this is what it is. And, and, and the beauty and the curse of this information is that, especially around God, which is why maybe our leaders don't want to 
talk about it because it's no easy answers and religion has been used to control people is that you get to say, in my experience, this is what God is. This is how the universe works. Because up until the time in Western thought, we were worshiping Yahweh, Jesus comes along and he says, no, no, no. There's another way to look at this. My father's not like that. So you got to choose. Okay, well, I've been, and some people didn't want to choose. Okay, now I've been, wor- you know, I've been worshiping Yahweh and you come along with this, you know, you start in trouble. You know what I mean? And, and, and so you're being encouraged to say, well, there's another way to look at this. I, the, the, the question you asked, it's, it's, it's better to read a book about it uh, because the church has used hell as a way to keep people in line. Elaine Pagels talks about the trajectory of how that came about and Satan and that kind of thing. And then you study and you come, you come up to say, well, this is what I think. I don't particularly personally believe in a hell. Mm-hmm. I think that that was used as a way to keep people in line. There was, you know, um, a physical place where you threw your trash and your rubbish and you threw your, your bodies and stuff like that. But I don't believe in a hell. But what I do believe is that there are different dimensions of existence where your mindset is is going to influence because thought creates our reality. And if you believe in a hell, you will create that. Mm, Okay. Uh, uh, I don't believe in a loving God who would barbecue you for eternity because of something you did or something your ancestors did, like Yahweh. Well, this sin is going to be visited on the seventh generation. Why? They didn't do anything. But that's me. That's me. Yeah, no, and you make perfect sense. uh, Because, yeah, I mean, I've also obviously had my dealings with religion throughout life. And, uh, you know, my grandmother was from a Christian background. Yeah. So uh, she she hated any time, but I was I was one growing up that I would go to different type of churches depending on what friend I was with. So mm-hmm. I've been to I've been to Baptist. I mean, and she mm-hmm. would be furious with me that I would go out and try these different uh, yeah churches. Um, and 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 a thing. So I used to question that, and and kind of it made me look at things within religion like why is why are there different teams almost yeah and then and then uh certain religions that i was ended up uh visiting uh they were they they were like cult-like mentalities and the whole outlook like they would believe something that the other religion didn't and it just confused me to a point to where i had to step back from religion as a whole and kind of just look at the bigger picture so for me I look at the Bible as uh, as a, a book of metaphors and, uh, you know, the situations to get you through life. And I think that but I don't think that uh, I don't I don't think that the words that, that you read there are literal words, which is why or, or literal uh, examples of of what they're describing. So with that being said, I have, I feel like anywhere you can be, anywhere you are, you is church for you. You don't necessarily have to attend a church. Church is within you. God is within you mm-hmm. and wherever you are. So that that's why I ask because I'm, I myself am, am going through a phase in my life where, where I want to know where these things really come into play. Where do these things connect? How do they tie into the, you know, when you set religion aside and just live your normal life daily without thinking about religion, how do these things actually interface? And that's kind of why I wanted to have this conversation today. And, and you've been awesome, uh, you know, d- explaining what these scriptures mean. And I think one thing I did take away from this is uh, you mentioned like the King James version of the Bible, which is really the, pretty much the only one that I've really ever known and looked at but yeah it's beautiful it it it, it, it's it, it is right and then like you said the explanations could be so different depending on the version that you get the translation and so you know that's just like you said it's a it's just another thing that you kind of got to think about 
What Bible is it that you uh, read from? Uh, 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 there's several, but the New Jerusalem Interlinear Bible. You can get it on Amazon. It's about 30 bucks. Um, it's a Hebrew uh, English translation, but they go into, um, you know, they, 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 they will give you in the footnotes, they will tell you this is not. This is inaccurate. We're not sure. But but you have to remember, you yeah, you want to get a study Bible. You can get the new, um, this is not bad. You can get, I use this in seminary. It's the new revised standard version. It's called the NRSV. Um, you could get the new American Greek Hebrew study Bible, English study Bible. You want to get where you got more translations. Again, the, the, the family Bibles are different translations than they are for the, 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 the scholars Bible that you use in seminary and what have you. I wanted to go back to what you were saying about when you were describing your spiritual journey, because yes. it was very similar to mine, and it's probably very similar to a lot of people who are listening. And 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 the thing is, is that it's good to see other ways of worship and what have you. But you're right. Um, uh, you know, Jesus talked about the kingdom being within you. Um, Plato talks about all, and Socrates, all learning is remembering. So there's really nothing new. It's just, uh, that's why they didn't charge for their teachings, especially because Plato was very wealthy, but neither did Socrates because he felt like he was unlocking. All learning is remembering. Our, our Aboriginal brothers and sisters and Native Americans, you know, nature was the great teacher. You watch how the, 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 the planets evolve. You watch how animals and, and other, uh, 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 you know, the snake people, the wing people, the, you know, the bird people, the, 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 the uh, uh, you know, all, all of creation, they looked at them as people. And that was great because you, were, you tried to treat them right. Not that they didn't war and all that, but, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the bird people, the deer people, uh, you, you know, it, you, there's that connectedness there. Um, the star people, uh, the star nations. Um, the Palladians uh, talked to Billy Meyer. Uh, the Palladians, uh, uh, well, the humanoids who talked to George Adamski, they talked about the interconnectedness of life and that we're all connected. Those are the truths that you find in all religions. We already know the differences. You want to find the truth, but you also want to know that there's some answers to things that you will never get. Uh, uh, one thing about Native Americans, um, you know, they, uh, well, not Native Americans, the Sioux, that's one tribe, not all Native Americans, but um, the Lakota, they call uh, the creator Wonka Tonkin. And Wonka Tonkin is translated as the great mystery. And in the West, we are, have to be certain about anything, everything. We're not taught to live in mystery. We're not taught to say, I don't know. Uh, yes, and, and, and we see that uh, uh, people get into trouble ascribing the characteristics to the known and unknowable. And this is true, but it's human to want to do that because uh, words are all we have. Words get in the way, but at the same time, words are all we have. But, but, but growing spiritually is, is, is part of being able to say, I don't know, because any God that you can describe is not God. Because while we're in the physical body, the finite can never comprehend the infinite. Right. Now, when we get out of the body, then we can go, oh, oh yeah, I remember that. I, yeah, well, I live in a fractalized universe. I'm coming from my source. I'm coming back. Let me tell you what happened down here on earth. We can, we can, we can work this through. But, but, and that's what happens with religion. So when I get with dysfunctional religion, so when I get an answer, I say, I, instead of saying, I have found a truth, I say, I found the truth. Now that's trouble. 
Right. Now that's trouble. See, because I got the truth. And if I got it, that means you don't. Right. And so maybe you can say I found a truth that what works for me is that I get my God. If I you don't have to use that word, I get my strength and, and motivation when I'm in nature. When I take off my shoes and walk on the earth, when I feel my connection with the dear people with the bird people, with the trees, with the all that is. And this sister over here may say, that sounds beautiful, but I get mine from the cathedrals. I get mine from these books here. And, that, and that's fine because they're all leading to the same place. But when I start getting into my way is right, I mean, what you just said about, uh, you, you know, the kingdom is within you. You know, Yeshua said that 2,500 years ago. And uh, you see what he, where he got. That scares right. people. Right. I'm not saying don't do it. I, I agree with you. But that's still scary to people. Most people want someone, whether it's a president, whether it's a, a, a priest. They, I need you to tell me. And we can be there to guide. But to tell you, that's something you're going to have to experience. So people can say, I believe in a God. Other people can say, well, I know there's one. I can't explain it. Maybe I won't use that word, but I know there's something greater than me and that yeah. I come from it and that I will go back to it. Yeah. But, but there are other people who say, no, 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 Michael, the knee has to bow a certain way. You've got to say these words and you got to say them this way. That's when we start getting into trouble. Right, right. And we start having wars and rumors of wars. Because if you worship a God that says, we say in our world that genocide is probably the worst crime you can ever do against humanity. But when you see what happened against Sodom and Gomorrah, when you see what Samuel does uh, and tells Saul to do, scorched earth, men, women, children killed, how come it's, it's, a, it's a crime, it's a high crime now, but it's okay if a God does it? Right. How come? How come that's okay? Because we're not getting it that those stories in the Bible, in the Old Testament at least, they're not about a God. They're about an invasion that happened and our ancestors were trying to tell us that this is how we navigated these situations. And maybe you can learn something from this. Look into your government, look into hidden hands in your government, look into your economics. Yeah, that's heavy. I mean, that's, 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 and that's man, that's why I'm, uh, Glad we had the conversation uh, and, and, you know, and a lot of people are um, afraid in this field uh, to to bridge the conversation of religion and how it ties into it's taboo. Right. I guess is what it That's, really is. Oh, I love people. that word. Yeah. And brother G, th this is the thing you have to remember. And, 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 and I do, too. There are a lot of ministers. And there are a lot of people in high places who believe what we believe. Let's stick with ministry for now. That's my field. But they would lose their jobs. They would yeah. lose their pensions. I'm not saying that's right. Everybody has to make a choice. They would lose their tenure if they're a professor because it is a taboo topic. And you have to decide where you're going to go with this. It's a taboo topic. So I don't want to be too judgy around people because I get that. I have a little more leeway, but I don't preach this from my pulpit. I mention UFOs. People see me on TV. They see, they read my books, but I don't mention it in the sense that I don't get up and do a sermon on Sunday morning about it. Why? Well, it's an open secret. People, I almost lost my job because someone saw me on Ancient Aliens years ago and, and a big donor and they wanted to fire me and they did. I didn't get fired. But my point being is that 
I would split my church. And why would I want to do that? There would be some people who would say, you know, Reverend Carter's got a point. Or, or, or I'm an experiencer too. Reverend Carter's right. And then there will be some people who say, no, he's a nut. And I didn't come to church to hear this. And so why would I do that? Exactly. So so I, I so I'm on these shows. So I do the History Channel. So I do this. So I do that. They have they don't. I'm not denigrating them. I have a little more leeway. I'm in a Unitarian Universalist congregation. They don't all of them don't think this is. Uh, uh, true either, but uh, most of them do. But I don't have a bishop over me. I don't have a pope. I don't have a diocese where I could lose my livelihood. I could be tried as a heretic and lose my livelihood. So everybody has to measure how much elasticity does my does my classroom have? Does my congregation have? Because um, I could lose everything I worked for. And it's taboo. And that's just the way the system is set up. And, and there are some people who want to keep it secret. We know that. But, but just to be, remind the audience that everybody's not in some great conspiracy to hide this, a lot of people just don't have... Um, the, the 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 room the elasticity to do this without without it costing them a lot because remember faith is measured by how you can repeat how much you can repeat the script how much you can parrot back what you've learned and we see that through history when people come with a truth not uh, uh, not the truth but a truth and we see how they've been treated, sometimes very shabbily. Yeah, and I'm feeling like having this conversation today, uh, you know, and, and I knew it was going to be one <laughs> that walked that line uh, for some people out there, like you just explained here a moment ago here. Um, but I, I just still feel like it's important to do important to have the conversation sure. and, yeah. and, and I guess, and what it, I think what it does is it shows some people out there why it's okay to have this conversation because you can have it and not, uh, stand on one side or the other. We, it could still be a conversation where, uh, there's a level of, uh, of open-mindedness to the interpretation and what's being interpreted. And uh, I think that that alone made this conversation uh, something that should be, I think if people watch this would, would help fuel, I think, I would think that it, when someone watched this immediately following this, they would dive into this same conversation. And I think that's a great thing right there. This is wonderful that you and other podcasters are doing this. We need this. Um, I, 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 it's heavy and I want to end on an up note. It's heavy, um, because it's making you, it's, it's like someone saying there's no Santa Claus when you're a kid or what, and I'm not saying there is no God. I'm just saying it's very, very different than, than what we thought is some parent up in the sky, maybe more impersonal, um, maybe more abstract, uh, uh again, because any God that you can, no, in, in one sense, is, is, is not God in some ways. But I, I want to end. Let's, let's do this. A couple of things. Um, yep. A couple of things. When I told you about Brother Hayam Ashad, the Israeli Brigadier General, I got hope from Yes. That. I tell you why. He's saying there's a Galactic Federation. He's saying that there are beings along with human beings who are saying, when we're ready, we will disclose. What I get from that, though, is that Earth is being talked about around the table. Now, one day I want to want us to be at the table, but we're being discussed. OK, that gives me hope that it's not just beings who want to keep us just want our technology. I mean, just want our resources, just want to keep us dumbed down. Um, because that has happened through history. 
The other thing is this. I, I, I look back at Chernobyl, which was not a happy time, but um, there, were, there was a ship that was seen over Reactor 4. And um, there were journalists, thousands of people witnessed this. There were journalists in, in, in the crowd. Some people said the ship that was there for hours. Some people say it was only there for three minutes. But if Reactor 4 had, had, had burned down, much of Europe would have been uninhabitable. And whatever that ship did, Reactor 4 never, it never melted down. Right. And so to me, that means that there are beings who have been here and interacted with our ancestors for all these many years, and they still care. That, that we, we want to see what these human beings are going to do. Maybe their consciousness will change. Uh, uh, we, we, we don't want to just take everything, their resources and what have you. To me, uh, and I don't think that's low-hanging fruit, um, I think that that's something to celebrate. Yeah. I also say to people out there, it's okay to wrestle with God if you believe in a God or the same type of God. I know Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living, Um but there's also a phrase, some people said Malcolm said it, Malcolm, but I don't know. But the unexamined faith is not worth having. And, you know, maybe you, you, you believe, like Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. Maybe your life is, you, you see, it's a little more complicated now. Maybe it's not as simplistic. And so what you believe 20 years ago may not be what you believe now about how the world works. And that's good because that's about evolution and we change and we grow. My concept of this intelligence is very different than it was. And it should be because I'm very different. Right. You know, and there are ways I can connect. How? Meditation, prayer, walking in nature, being still, reading, studying. Many ways to do that. But... um. You know, people will walk away from this tonight and go, well, you know, go back to the old way. I don't have a dog in the hunt. Whether you, whether you read what I, what I said or whatever, I don't care because we all have to find our way. I could be wrong. There's always that possibility. I, I could be wrong. I'm just saying this is where my research has brought me as an experiencer uh, of many, many years, uh, still suffering from some of the trauma of that um, because, you know, it's traumatic in some ways, even though I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Um, we all have to find our way. And, and there are people out here to help. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Prayer, meditation, nature, you don't have to reinvent to, in order to connect and to raise our consciousness. Because I believe that's what this is about. It's not just about back engineering and cloaking systems and, and robots and laser weapons. It's not all about that. It's about how do we change our consciousness? And that's what these teachers came to teach us, whether it's, whether it's Jesus, I got my pictures of Jesus here, whether it's the Palladians, whether it's Buddha, whether it's Lao Tzu, I have him upstairs, whether it's these star people here. That's what this is about, to learn to love. Agreed. 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 Awesome stuff. Power pack, powerhouse uh information that you that you've given here and in 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 your reverence. So you it, it you know, you have to to be able to interpret the scripture the way that you do is is appreciated. And uh I uh, once again, like I said earlier, I think that this conversation definitely moves the needle is as far if it just is, does something as simple as gets people to uh talk about what we just spoke about so uh i do appreciate you coming on in reverend i have a great idea and i'll talk to you offline about it somewhere uh that we can actually go next another really tough tough thing to talk about uh and i'll send you the information on it if you wouldn't okay. mind coming back at a later time sure thank you right. first of all thank you for what you do um, thank everybody and my buddy Mark A. Eddie and other folks who are listening. And thank you for taking the time. 
out of your night and hope you have a good week and a good holiday season coming up. Yes, Lent sir. Same, same to you. And uh, where can everybody find you and where can we get this uh, the oh, latest book? Great. Yeah. Let me, let me get this in. Just shot two new episodes of ancient aliens. One called the teacher, one called the chosen. I guess it'll be out in the next couple of months. I just shot in Boston. There's a show coming out, but I can't. I signed a non-disclosure thing. I can tell you it's about experiences. It's coming out in June on the Discovery Channel. My books are on Amazon.com and Barnes and Nobles. I have a new book. It's a book of sermons. It's not UFO related. Justice, religion, philosophy, race, all those good heavy topics. Yes. It's called Enlightenment. It just came out last month in December. Um, it's on Amazon. I'm at uh, Michael J.S. Carter at Gmail. Uh, I have a fan page, my, uh, Reverend Michael J. Carter on uh, Facebook. And if you write me, uh, you could also type in Michael J.S. Carter. If you write me, I will answer. Um, I, I forgot about all that stuff. And so uh, check out the books. And listen, don't let them take away your joy, man. Uh, it's an exciting time to be alive. Uh, reach out to your brothers and sisters. We're not alone. And uh, we never were. Uh, there is a source. You can know how to tap into that. Uh, we can carry on the conversation at another time. It's exciting times to be alive. And um, just hug your loved ones. Love your neighbor. Have a great week. That is awesome. Awesome way to end it, uh, Reverend Carter. Keep doing God's work. Keep uh, keep the mission going. We will be talking again soon. Once again, thanks for uh, coming in tonight. Thanks for staying up late with us. Thanks for delivering uh, such a powerful message. And uh, I will be talking to you soon. Have a great rest of your night. Have a great week as Thank well. Thank you, brother. Send me the link. I will. Take care. All right. Out. All right, guys. All right. Pfft. What can I say? I knew it was going to be religion is always one of those subjects, which is, you know, a little dicey. It's times, uh, as long as you're not trying to uh, just preach your way uh, and your, you know, uh, view and, and trying to drive people one way or another based on what your thought process is, I think re religion can be in the conversation. It can be something that, that can be talked about, especially when we look at it on the larger stage of how all this thing that we're experiencing with the phenomena may tie into that. He talked about perfect examples of where it showed up throughout history. So we know that this has been a long time thing that's been mentioned. And there is something where these two things intersect. So uh, the Reverend was the perfect person to bring in for this tonight. I think that was power packed. Uh, but for you guys, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and get ready to take a pause for the cause as we get ready to jump into our next and final hour. So hour three of after hours guys kick back and relax and we're going to go ahead and bring it home with uh, hour three so we'll be back in a minute
Right, guys, welcome back to Spaced Out Radio after hour number three, tres, after hour number tres. Uh, I'm your host, Mr. Rob G, and let's go ahead and talk real quick uh, about this Reno trip, right? Reno trip is coming up in four weeks, five, five, six weeks-ish, somewhere in there. Uh, it's going to be May 10th through 12th, Reno, Nevada. At the Silver Legacy Casino and Resort. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun time, man. I can't wait. Uh, we, you know, Dave has been adding a lot of guests, uh, a lot of speakers, a lot of uh, uh, people that you guys want to see are going to be there at this event. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. And we want to see you guys there. So the way it's going down is, is Friday night. Uh, we are going to do a live show. So Jessica, myself, Dave, we're going to do a one hour each. So a three hour block live uh, show that will be streamed on the channel for those who did weren't able to make it. And we'll be doing this right in front of all you guys who are there. So this should be fun. Uh, soon as that's over, we're going to go ahead and move on over to the VIP party it's going to go down. I have no clue. I heard people are going to be singing. I heard there's some great dancers out there. And we're going to just experience what it is that uh, you guys want to do. So we can't wait to meet you. Uh, Saturday, what's going to happen is Ghost Hunt with Merle in Virginia City. Uh, then Saturday night, the UFO Sky Watch with Melinda Leslie. And then hopefully, like I said before, some CE5 stuff because we're going to have uh, some CE5 specialists in the building um, and maybe we can summon something. Maybe we can bring something uh, into light in front of us. I know there's going to be some psionics cameras on hand that some people are bringing. So uh, maybe you'll get a chance to use one of those. And then I'm sure that once you use one, you're going to want to go and get one for yourself. Uh, the prices go as follows. $60 for a regular ticket. And then $100 gets you that same regular ticket plus all the VIP and swag bags. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Like I said, we're going to make sure that we all get together. We're going to have breakfast for dinner. And it's because here in America, you can do what you want to do, right? So we're going to invite Dave Scott on over. We're going to get him some, some pancakes, some flapjacks, whatever you call them from wherever you're at. Uh, either some French toast. I see Lavera said, Lavera Lucchini said some habanero omelets, uh, things of that nature, whatever the case. We're ordering Dave breakfast for dinner. It's going to be epic. Bring your cameras. Um, and also, don't forget to go to spacedoutradio.com forward slash shop. Get some of that official spaced out swag. Because you, if you get the Dave draws, right, Dave will be there to sign your Dave draws, your Dave Scott draws. Uh, Rob G draws are on there, too. I will be more than happy to sign your Rob G draws as long as they're not on your person. <laughs> Let me put the disclaimer out there. We will sign your, your SOR draws as long as they're not on your person. Um, but, yeah, T-shirts and all those other things. Bring them in, and uh, we'll sign anything that you want want us to sign. Uh, we'll do whatever it is you guys want to do. If you're still there on that Sunday, after we had all that fun Friday and Saturday night, Sunday is just, uh, from what I understand, going to be just a free-for-all day. So anything goes that day. It's totally up to you guys. Maybe, I don't know what we can, I don't, it's up to you. So whatever you guys want to do, let us know. And we'll, we'll definitely do it. So once again, May 10th through 12th, the SOR uh, fan party, please be there. I would love to meet you. 
And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into our hour three here uh, with with uh, the guy, the man with the plan. I mean, uh, he's all he's usually here with us on our Sundays, uh, getting into some paranormal talk. And he's known to us here as the paranormal reporter. His name is uh, Travis Mustus. We're going to go ahead and welcome Travis on into the show tonight. Uh, Travis Mustus, ladies and gentlemen, how are you, sir? Oh, yes, it's uh, it's been good. I've been very good. How about yourself there, Rob? Man, you know, um, shoot. Okay, let me just let me break out my violin, my small violin. Uh, so I, I went out to Catalina Island a couple weeks ago and had an awesome time on the cruise. I was out there hanging with uh, my mother for her birthday. It's her first time on a cruise. Yeah, it was her first time. So it was an epic, lovely time uh, with mother all week. Uh, we came back, had dinner with her. But as soon as I got back, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get back to work here. And then I got sick, man. So I've been sick for the last seven days kind of just coming back around this weekend. And so I'm kind of a little in and out, you know, foggy, uh, feeling a little bit weird. But uh, it's all worked out, man. We had a powerhouse show tonight. I don't know if you were able to catch it. We had Reverend Michael Carter here going deep on just the the Bible and, and how the uh, scriptures could be interpreted to show links to extraterrestrials, you know, going all the way back to the beginning. So it was a great show. And then now we get Travis Mustus in hour three to kind of just put the cherry on top for us tonight. Um, you know, what, what, uh, I don't know. And I guess that would be, you know, when we talk about the natives, uh, there, there really isn't technically as far as I know, and maybe may correct me if I'm wrong. What is like the parallel between, uh, religion and then what it is that, uh, the natives practice is folklore or, you know, the, the, the old stories, could these be considered like a form of religion as far as like the same, same thing, stories being retold about things that happened in old time? How do those things relate to you? Like, uh, or do they at all? Uh, well, for native spirituality, the outlook on uh, different, uh, uh, I should say beings that are connected throughout the universe. It, it's, you know, there's a lot of like, uh, there'll be a story or there'll be a teaching that's tied to it usually. Um, but like, as for, uh, as for stories though, a lot of the legends, like there are, there are some that are just there to entertain, like, uh, like some funny ones, like, uh, like joke ones that are kind of like, uh, kind of get a little kick out of, but it does uh, still give a little bit of a his historical look at reality of, uh, of these creatures or uh, beings that were existing in that time. Like there's a lot about like how the bear lost its tail and, and a few other, like a uh, few other tales that exist out there. And um, like, aside from like what you would hear from like the Thunderbird tales and how, it, how it was a protector or a guardian over the land or, or um, you know, as such. Right. But like uh, for, <clears throat> but for, for us, it, it is like, uh, it is like, uh, like the animals and the energy and the cryptids are all on that universal level right so we're all it's all connected yeah yeah so you have uh so it sounds like uh you have some stories that are there like you stated just for entertainment uh and yeah. teaching teaching purposes essentially right so just a yeah. message behind the story yeah that is meant to teach okay yeah, so and still, still like uh, for example, let me just say that there was uh, like there's a teaching of how the bear lost its tail, and uh, it talks about like how the bear was like searching for food during the great long winter, like in this would be particularly during the ice age, and then uh, the story goes on to tell about how the wolf tricked the bear into using his tail to try to catch fish from an ice hole, but the bear ended up getting stuck there, frozen there, waiting there real long, and the, the wolf's like just keep doing that because the wolf is really using bait and catching fish, right? But here the bear didn't know that and just you know thought i'm gonna stick my tail in there fit i'll catch a fish right so then the, the ice froze over and then the bear tugged and pulled and ripped off its tail and um this uh the wolf was like doing that like to he wanted like to trick the bear and like that was kind of like that's just a, a tale like how the bears changed over time from the ice age and like uh how the evolution of that took place and how they no longer have a long tail 
So I just figured so, I'd mention that. So let me ask you this, like, um, because if I had to guess, obviously natives are here first. So I would think that uh, you may find in maybe in the Bibles, different Bibles for different religions, some of those stories that were retold over time that maybe they line up or or uh, may have been spoken to, uh, you know, from the natives first and then maybe adapted or adopted into uh, stories that made it into the Bible. Um, are there any examples of that uh, that you know of that, that you could point to? Like, uh, for instance, uh, they talk about Ezekiel's will is a famous one that, every, that Timber Chet always keeps bringing up. Um, are there stories similar to that uh, in native folklore, like to specifically the Ezekiel's will? Uh, that people talk about all the time. Yeah, they always say uh, that they would, uh, when the beings come to visit our star nation comes to pick you up and stuff that they bring you to the stars and you'd see like uh, you'd see the stars and the planets and and uh, like on that level like they bring you up to the sky right and then the sky world and like a lot of like uh, um, these places have a crystal uh, crystal building or crystalline structures crystalline structures and uh, and like I said these a lot of these beings are very uh, esoteric are very powerful with the universe and connection and um, like I said uh, a lot of, there's a lot of a lot of that going on and then there was also too like uh, the the flood was another one there was a great flood and uh, there was uh, a lot of like animals that were trying to help rebuild the rebuild the land. Uh, for Turtle Island, and um, it was like uh, a lot of the, like the beaver couldn't do it, and a lot of the a lot of the other other like water uh, mammals couldn't do it. So like uh, the only one that was able to do it was like a muskrat because it was able to dive deep enough and hold its breath long enough. But it uh, it ended up dying, uh, rebuilding the land and stuff like that. There's like so like there's like little tales that that kind of like talk about this uh, flood that happened around the area and and. Um, yeah, just like things like, you know, so like there is there is that that what I noticed in a similarity if that, you know, if that's a cool size mm. anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty big. Uh, I mean, because they say that the flood story uh, they find in a lot of different uh, ancient references to a flood like event. So that's actually pretty interesting. I didn't know uh, the, and with the, and then obviously within the native folklore, it, it, instead of it pertaining to, to people like it does in the Bible, uh, there's, they use, uh, animals, powerful animals that represent, uh, certain things. So that's actually pretty interesting. I never heard that, uh, aspect well, it of it. Yeah, there's a deeper story too, and it was like, um, and it was like uh, these like mystical, like uh, like I said, uh, these time of uh, beings that were existed on the land were very uh, connected, and they were able to talk with the animals, like like on a one to one, like they were able just to communicate spiritually, and, and uh, they were very uh, connected with all the plants and the star nations, and uh, the the I should say the star woman, she dropped her uh, medicine bundle in the in the water. And it spread all the all the all this creation energy in the water and all these uh all these beings they started like uh, they started started to i should say they started to use it and take it down in the deep and and uh she was ended she ended up uh she ended up getting swallowed by because she went down to try to get like a retrieve her medicine bundle from the from the waters and then uh they ended up taking her the the creatures from the deep and then there, there was one warrior there Wasaki Chuck and he got very upset about this so he decided to rage war with the beings of the ocean so every being that he's seen in the ocean he he, he would re it, like seek revenge and attack these uh beings of the deep and and uh so he, he went to war for many years and and he was very upset and and uh and uh, yeah it was like uh it was like one of those stories like and then the the seed was trying to like uh kind of like it started to rise because creation was very upset with his actions towards them and it was it was like one of those kind of like uh, uh, base tales that happened with uh, within that story, right? So, you know, you take you take for what you can get, and um, but like I said, it was kind of like he was uh, very upset with these beings because his mother's death or whatever with, from you know from these uh, creatures in the deep, I should say. <laughs> mm. 
So that's yeah. interesting. So I would want to know, are there uh, any <clears throat> other examples that you may be aware of that, that kind of line up with some of the stories that might be in the Bible? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, like we, like the thing is though, like that's pretty much it. Like from what I've looked at, like, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, spinning wheels and stuff like that, we always hear about like, um, you know, like those kind of like ships in the skies and stuff like that. And, and, um, the, how they would come down and land and, and, uh, in the forests and people would actually go out and meet them and greet them and stuff. But, uh, it's kind of like, um, like I said, it's more or less, uh, like I said, it's kind of just tied with, uh, how it is like, um, like right now kind of deal. Like, it's not really, uh, it's not really, um, like I said, like, like the stories that are about that time are kind of about, uh, these people that were, um, that were very, uh, like, uh, very different from us. And they, they were, uh, they lived for a lot longer and they were able to, uh, talk with the animals and, um, like I said, they were on this connected level with uh, with all the different kind of beings on this on this earthly plane, and and the universal plane because they were you know and like it was kind of like that level. Uh, it, like the Wasaki Chuck, he had a brother, right? And uh, he was very upset with his brother, and and his brother was uh, kind of like a trickster in that sense, and he was able to shape shift into uh, into a, well, he was he would shape shift into creatures and beings, and so uh, uh, Wasaki Chuck was after his brother there, and, and he was very upset. And, and uh, so he, he was, you know, searching the land for his brother and he ended up finding him. And well, he ended up finding a, well, he ended how it, how it ended up, uh, the tale was told was he found a pack of wolves and he ended up living amongst them. And he, he, they're like, you can hunt with us until we find your brother. And, uh, but usually wolves and they hunt, they'll hunt like, a, like, like I said, they're a pack, pack so they'll work together. So Pusaki uh, Chuck had to live next to this other wolf, black wolf to learn the ways and, and, uh, eventually a couple of summers went by a couple of win winters went by and you know they they grew close and and uh eventually that black wolf turned to him and said oh, saki chuck i have something to tell you and i'm sorry i have to say this but i'm i'm your brother and he kind of turned back into the turned back into his brother before me and he's like if you still wish to kill me you can like you know i'm sorry about what i did and betrayal betrayal to you and and then he's like, "Oh, you're my brother. I'm sorry. Like I didn't, you know, what I mean, like I, I didn't, I didn't know you're this wolf like the whole time and kind of deal." And he's like, "God, oh, I don't, I don't see revenge that way. Like you're, you're my brother. Like you know, what I mean, like and, and uh, they ended up being, uh, like they ended up being family again or whatever, right? But it's kind of like that in that story, right? Like, um, uh, like I said, people were very connected with the animals. They were able to live amongst them. They were very, uh, like I said, they were able to transform and change and and." Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, so a lot of them are about teaching and a lot of, you know, different tales and stuff that, like on that sense. When we talk like the stories of the Bible, right? Like uh, that's the similarity I can say. Like it's like that there's like uh, there's always like a teaching or some sort of um, uh, uh, lesson to be learned from them. Or you'll get a glimpse into that era of that existence or time. <laughs> Nice, nice. And that's actually uh, great information. Um, and I kind of want to point something. Thanks, Deb from SAC, for your uh, support of Spaced Out Radio. She was raised by wolves, LOL. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I can see that. I can see that. Tell Skinny Bob I said, what's up? Um, and with that being said, President Zaddy brought something up. And and then this is where, because you can, and, and that's what I said earlier, uh, when, whenever you, religion ends up being a taboo topic in most cases, not really just within ufology, just in general. Um, and, but I think there is a way to still have the conversation without, uh, you know, forcing your particular belief onto someone else it's just really discussing the information that's there and maybe you agree with it maybe you don't and then say hey, it's it's for anyone's interpretation and at the end of the day you can walk away with what you walk away with um you know with that being said you know there's there's theories and not really jumping into religion by saying this but the adam and eve thing so you know if you want to look at adam and eve on the face of it 
uh, the way that it's told is that Adam and Eve were, you know, first Adam and then Eve, first two people created. And so if you want to take it in a literal sense, which once again, I don't, I don't look at the, what's written in the Bible as a literal thing. I think of it as more as a metaphorical thing. So when it comes down to Adam and Eve, for me, uh, and, and even the, the, the arc stories as well, uh, I think those are metaphors for other things. I think Adam and Eve could represent uh, the first uh, generation of humans as we were introduced to this planet, and and and, and uh, not saying you know as far as the two first the first two humans created period, but just maybe the first group of humans that were introduced here. Then you have the the Ark, which for me. Uh, I feel like it could represent something like us traveling from some other planet uh, along with life, uh, other species of things that were introduced to this planet. Uh, and, you know, and like I said, it's for anyone's interpretation. So uh, you were going to say something? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say what I found interesting about the Adam and Eve story is like, uh, the part where where they get they end up getting caught and he's getting like they're getting exiled out of the, out of Eden right and and um, he's like uh, he's like but he's like but he's like but uh, he's like but father if I go out there they're gonna kill me and it's like who is he referring to right like and that that's obviously the Outlanders there. and then he's like no no they're they won't hurt you no harm will come to you because they will know you're my son you know and uh you know and it's like so they were going out there when they got kicked out to go be with like the outlanders and other the other existences at that time and uh like you said i do agree with that like that they were some form of uh of engineered human beings that were you know being like kind of like uh in this like enclosed or kept area for them <laughs> but, yeah I mean, and it makes sense, uh, you know, and, and, and there's obvious, there's reasons why this is the first time that that idea has been presented that the art uh, tech could have been uh, a ship that brought us from another planet to here. I mean, if you think about it, technically, once we Elon Musk builds this starship or whatever it is that's supposed to take uh colonize uh mars is that's essentially the same thing if if people who inhabited mars going forward uh if they lost their history the moment that we came over to mars uh then they would probably look at elon musk starship potentially as the new art and would probably be th one of the things that were written in in the book of mars or whatever book you know what i mean so it's just i think it things get lost in translation I, and i think that's been proven because we've seen civilizations get to a certain point of uh technological advancement and then get knocked down so you would assume the same thing would happen once we go colonize mars if something happens here on earth uh that kind of breaks that lineage and that 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 direct uh uh historical reference then there's going to be stories that were told about how we got to mars and it's i think it might end up if if enough time surpassed then it would probably mimic a lot of the things that people read in the Bible today. So I think that's, uh, you know, uh, interesting spin on it. But other than that, uh, I know you've been into, um, or lately you've been able to kind of come through and show us some awesome sightings. Have you had anything lately, anything in your life that has, that is going on lately that you want us to know about? Yeah, um, other than like uh, flying, uh, you know, uh, lights or uh, sightings in the skies, uh, whether that be crafts or, you know, you name it, uh, star spirits. Um, uh, th there's an elder, respectable elder in our in our area here that was uh, posting online there. Like last night, they're talking about how they're hearing like some heavy, large, heavy breathing in the woods behind their house. And I'm like, whoa, OK, well, maybe I'll uh, get to go check that out here tomorrow because it is my day off now. So like. Uh, you know, I've been looking forward to go checking out that and just maybe check and see if I see any tracks or anything un out of the unusual there. But, uh, but yeah, like she was like warning people like, Hey, if you're out there tonight, be careful. I hear something breathing it could be a bear or something wild back there. So, you know, there's that going on. 
Let me ask you this. I just remembered this right now. And I, when I originally well, I was talking about this on yesterday's show, actually, let me bring it back up here. It was uh, when I was talking to Evan B. Stone and Jack Vasey, I was talking about uh, during on one of their episodes of their show, they had brought up this cryptid that I had never heard of. And then I was going to ask you if you've heard of it and then maybe... Uh, if you have any stories about that within um, that the natives may tell um, the elders, uh, this 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 cryptid would be called bear beast. So I guess it's like part bear. It's an upright walking bear um, that that as far as from what they described, I guess had more human characteristics as far as like the legs so it wasn't like a bear standing up but it's like a bear slash something else are there any stories uh that you have that tie into anything that did look like that yeah some of those like ancient bears like uh that have uh long since disappeared look pretty uh pretty gnarly looking i should say from their oddly shaped stout stout noses and like uh you know just like the the brawn muscular structures of these uh some of these creatures like the bears uh short face bears and um but like a lot of the elders would say that when we see uh sometimes these uh spirit realms or these cryptic uh beings um would come through uh they would often have like human physical features and but they'd be very ghastly looking because whatever uh dimension or level they've come from are we're seeing them at and uh they're like i said it's it it's almost like um it's very jarring to us because we're just not uh, used to seeing something on that level like i said their eyes and teeth and facial structures look pretty pretty uh you know, uh, scary looking, freaky looking. And, uh, like, you know, like, uh, the dude said there, it's, uh, they had a half a body or half human. And the elders would say that like, there would be like a half an animal. And then like, a sometimes it would like, there'd be more, it would look like a human body It'd be just coming out of the neck of like a large wolf or something like, you know what I mean? It was like, like they were very like uh different kind of looking beasts that would uh, change around or, you know, it, like sometimes like he said they would stand up they had legs like human but they had the body of a bear like so there there are there are cases of that and um depending on what uh you know uh what they were encountering or what uh you know it was uh at that time of the universe right uh for them going on but yeah there's there's definitely a lot of that and so <laughs> Yeah, and I wanted to know also the uh, Patterson Gimlin film is what we were doing yesterday. Is uh, he has this AI that he uses uh, just to kind of just as a tool for himself to kind of type like like same thing that you did with the processing with the embossing of the craft so you can get the edges. So he uses a AI program that kind of cleans things up a bit and kind of maybe interpret may even misinterpret uh, uh and fills in what it thinks is missing there and and the results were kind of shocking i wanted him to actually uh uh get to one of your ufo videos uh, so he could kind of run it on that and maybe we'll have him do it next time but um it was pretty awesome and uh you know it was just another it just shows you how you can take things one step further from maybe you have a little bit of evidence and then but then you can actually try to post process or do something that might uh you know kind of fill in the blanks but i think the thing with ai is that because it's guessing on what it is it's filling in that maybe long term until AI gets better, it may not be the best uh, tool to do that with. But um, I wanted him to run it also on the other Bigfoot uh, video, the one that they had taken off of the train. But we kind of we just didn't have time to do it. Um, in your experience, I know that you've done it sort of with the embossing. Uh, are there other tools out there that you use or might be considering to use uh, on on videos going forward? Or have you been dabbling with anything behind the scenes? Uh, my, I wanted to get my hands on like uh, like a at least like some infrared cameras. Um, 
if I could get that, then that'd be awesome. But um, uh, I've been buying like security cameras and things like that. So I've been looking to uh, start like hooking those up and aiming them to the sky and in certain areas where there's been, uh, you know, considered hotspots and things like that. Right. And um, other than that, like uh, it's, it's been just like a, a process of uh, time in the universe. What, uh, what it, what's meant to be like, what will, is what will happen. Right. So I've been just like flowing with that and uh, whatever uh, device or electronics I can get my hands on at that time, you know, I'll gladly pick it up. So, but uh, for me, the what's worked for me was that embossing app, and um, I guess the videos. You know, just the videos in general are like you know the best best uh, process for doing that at this time. And um, yeah, like uh, I've like I said, it's been a, it's been a catalog so far <laughs> of different kind of craft that I've seen, and I'm never you know like it's always something new and always like uh, and. You know, uh, even the familiar ones that I, if I do see something similar to it again, I could tell which is, which is uh, like, say, what is an airplane or what is uh, one of these crafts flying through the air just by the speed and how they're, how dense their light is and just that energy feel from the, what you get. And, and uh, yeah, it's like, um, you know, you could see, <laughs> you could see like a, a progression over time, especially if you're just starting to do it. And, um, if you're very open to that and just start off like uh knowing your stars and taking pictures with like uh you know because like even the telescope with uh you know those aperture sites that's also another thing that i've used over time to get those kind of photos or videos of the moon and things like that mm -hmm. so that's helped me and so that's you know that's uh, yeah i think you bring up a good thing uh to to know the stars know where they're at in the sky i mean that's probably step number one so that you don't mistake a planet uh, for something here. And actually, so I'll bring this up since we had a uh, good friend, Tom King, was here earlier uh, who had filmed the Phoenix Lights. But the guy has, and maybe I can, I'm, I'm going to talk to him. Maybe I'll get him as a guest here. But he has an amazing setup where he has cameras that are just pointed at the sky 24-7. So, and he's catching stuff like you're catching, just as good quality as stuff you're catching. He's, uh, you know, I did a show with him on my channel where he kind of lays out all the equipment that he's using. And, uh, I mean, he's catching Tic Tacs in the sky in the middle of the day. He had this one encounter where uh, he's following one that's miles up in the sky and he draws a line so it shows like the pattern that the object had moved the entire time and this thing is making all sorts of weird left right anomalous turns and it's something that he catches all the time i've been under the the belief that we should you know as a community uh you know if we were going to fund something that we should fund something like what tom king has imagine if we had 20 Tom Kings around the country that were all filming 24 hours a day, things pointed directly up at the sky. Imagine what type of data we'd be able to take home. And, and it goes to point points, uh, credit to you because you go out there and you catch it just on, you know, a flu. You're not watching the sky 24 hours a day and you're catching great stuff. So imagine if you had like full time, cameras sitting on top of the roof you would have proof positive data that would show the world that what's up there is real and the thing that bothers me about it is that he has all this data but no one is doing anything with it like like so it should be on front page news your sightings should be ones that are are featured on news stories and it's just it just amazes me that with all that data there just from a regular person that they don't reach down and kind of grab some of that and say hey this was something weird that this person caught even though you didn't catch it on radar but it's obviously something that isn't uh you know explainable so just a kind of a rant that i wanted to go on there because i think it's uh it, it it's you have to there has to be a reason why you know and it's not just because 
uh, there's only one set of data point because I think what you have in your video is an, weird enough for you to be able to spend some time on it and try to figure out what it is. And then same thing with Tom King, but just wanted to bring that up. Um, I don't know if, if you have anything to say to that. Oh, oh yeah, no, this is, it's, uh, it's totally all within the realm for me. Like, uh, you know, to the ancients, these, uh, these visitors and passerbys in the night, we're always, uh, very much connected to our, our, our ancient times and our societies of that ancient world. And, and, uh, for me, I just feel like that's part of that connection and part of that acknowledging of that connection. And, uh, and just, uh, like I said, we're, I think it's all part of the universal path that we're all on this, you know, it's a circle of life and, uh, it's a journey and we're all learning it together. And, and, uh, yeah, so like I said, it's a, it's a process and things will, things happen over time. And like I said, over, over these last little whiles, I've been just, uh, blessed with all these spectacular crafts I was able to witness and see. And, and to me, that's what I uh, take it as these blessings and to see them and, and, uh, to, uh, like I said, to see that or know that, know that's out there. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, here's what I want to do, Travis. I want to go ahead and, uh, I'm just I'm going to go ahead right now and just thank you for coming in tonight. We got about 15 minutes left in the show and there's a couple things that I need to do. So once again, I want to thank you for giving us your time here uh, on Sunday uh, to chime in for some conversation. We shall do this again. Hopefully uh, the, the aliens come and see you between now and next week. So we get some more of those A1 uh, sightings that you capture, man. Outside of that, you got anything you want to say? yes um yes uh definitely they're they're around <laughs> just got to be open to that and uh they'll they'll make themselves connect like the connection will be available to make and and uh yeah thank you everyone for supporting uh the mars bug wars and all the other the pleiadian guidance and the pleiadian they stole me my heart and the fort sunder book it's the books i should say it's excellent and thank you so much for having me on the show rob and i'll see you all next week and like you said hopefully star nation will be around for us to have another great video all right travis thanks so much for coming on in man uh and joining us on this fantastic sunday evening you get some rest you have a great rest of your night man and we'll talk again soon oh yeah oh yeah definitely y'all take all right guys travis moose deuce our paranormal reporter, the guy, our Sunday guy, uh, coming in and just having some great conversation, man. G great getting his perspective on the conversation that we had today and how it applies. I mean, I've always heard that there were a lot of the stories that are told within the Bible uh, or have been retold, you know, throughout other civilizations, other religions, other uh you know, points in time. And, uh, it was pretty cool to hear about, uh, the natives flood story, right. And how, you know, the parallel is that the Bible obviously is, is speaking in, uh, supposed to be retelling the story of events that happened to humans, to specific people. Whereas when he explains it as told through native folklore, uh, there's usually in place of humans, there are powerful animals or uh, entities that uh, that that fill in for humans. So thought the parallel between those two things is pretty awesome. was glad we were able to get his viewpoint on that uh, as we cap off this uh, great, great show tonight. So, and I want I left this message up on the screen because uh, Brown Dorf is saying, let's go to the Patty site, Rob G. I'll be up there later this year. I'm with that. Uh, I'm with that Brown Dorf. Uh, let's set that up. Let me know when you're going and uh, let's line it up. I know it's in Northern California. I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, we should definitely do that. It would be cool to see if we could find the exact spot where the, where it was taken from and then kind of maybe recreate the, uh, you know, the video or hopefully even catch something new down there if there's something new to catch. Um, but I don't know how you guys feel about the Patterson Gimlin film. Like we talked about with uh, Evan and Jack yesterday, it's one of those films that are uh, steeped in, in, you know, uh, almost like a religious belief 
uh, that what was depicted in the video was completely real. Um, and, you know, obviously without being there in person, it's hard to say one way or the other. Um, but I think, you know, if I had to guess, if I had to say, was that real or not? Um, I think I'm still really close to the middle of the road on that. It, for me, it could go either way. But I would love to visit that location and kind of see, just to kind of get a feel for it. I watched, uh, as well, a program. I kind of fell asleep on it, actually. Maybe I'll rewatch it. But it, it uh, listed, there was a video that it shows, about 30-minute video, and it went over some compelling evidence of a uh, video of Bigfoot and things like that being caught out in the wild, and uh, there were some of the th uh, videos that I saw that I just couldn't, you know, it was like, wow, kind of blew me away. It was like, man, that might be something right there. I would love, I would love nothing more than to see evidence of a Bigfoot, not in person. I wouldn't hopefully like to see it in person, but I would love to see it. You know what I mean? Because I know the possibilities out there. One thing that they hung up, they hung on that made a lot of sense to me is the differences in uh, the prints that they had been recovering at different sites. And some of them were obvious fakes, but then there were some uh, that they that that made more sense as far as the weight distribution and and I forgot there's a little area right in the um, arch of where the human foot would have an arch. And, and I guess in these big foot, they have this, uh, uh, God, I don't even know. I don't, I'm going to mess it up trying to even explain it. But it, it essentially allows for the foot to articulate to where it can, you know, uh, instead of staying flat, it can uh, put itself in a position where it's easier for it to uh, attach to a tree or to contour to a tree. Messing it up, I'm going to have to go back and uh, and then next week I'll tell you exactly what it was. But with that being said, let me go ahead and look into uh, the chat here. Let's see. Dev from Sack wants to make out with a Bigfoot? Oh, I don't know, Dev from Sack. I don't know if you want to wish that upon yourself. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Okay. This is general conversation. Let me see if we have anything starred here. Uh, we had... Oh, I didn't get to ask this question. Sorry, Montauk is strange. I wanted to ask uh, Travis about this, the Sky Woman. We'll make sure to tag that for the next time he comes in. Dang, I missed that question. So sorry about that, uh, Montauk. Uh, let me see what else we have here. Okay, we have about eight minutes here. So let's go ahead and run the uh, commercial here. Uh, for our Reno trip in our swag store because we need to do this actually every episode um, and we're going to start doing that from this point forward because it's important. We, we, we need to let you know about it. So here Guess we go. Guess what? We do not have ugly swag. We have spaced out radio gear that you're going to want to wear. Why? Because no one wants to wear ugly clothing. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com and go shopping today. You'll be glad you did. And it's a great way to support our show. Once you get your gear, send us a picture of you rocking out in your SOR swag. Spacedoutradio.com. Shop there today. And make yourself look good. Love your woo. -woo. It's time to make a commitment to the third annual SOR Fan Party. This time, we're heading to Reno, Nevada and the Silver Legacy Casino and Resort, May 10th through 12th, 2024. Tickets are $60 or $100 for VIP. With that, you get a free radio show. You get to hang out with celebrity guests from Spaced Out Radio, including our team, who are coming to hang out with you. You get to meet the entire team, like Science Bob, 
Merle, Melinda Leslie, Geraldina Roscoe, and more. It's a weekend packed with adventure, and we want you there. After all, we're doing this for you. Find out more and get your tickets at info at spacedoutradio.com and book your hotels today at the Silver Legacy Casino and Resort in Reno, Nevada. Come join us for the SOR Fan Party, May 10th through 12th, 2024. All right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and also wanted to, while we're here, we might as well take a look at, let me remove this real quick. Uh, take a look at one of the items that you can get from the swag store. And that's going to be, of course, I'm going to promote uh, promote some of the Rob G stuff, man. Because it, it have to happen, right? The Rob G, the Sweet Robbie Alien shirt, comes in so many different colors. Definitely, this is the one that you want to get. I don't know if I can get any closer to that. Let me see. Okay. All right, so close as you can get. All right, the Rob G Alien Head T-shirts uh, with the After Hours Rob G on there. If you're wearing anything that has the Rob G logo on it, man, let me know. I'm gonna bring a pen. I'm gonna write whatever you want me to write on that. Uh, let's put it up and let's frame it and let's uh, make it a, uh, an experience. Um, so anybody but Castle Dude, I know you got the Rob G draws. So we won't be signing those, man. They unless they're they've never been <laughs> they've never been worn. Uh, then maybe we can definitely go ahead and sign those for you, um, Castle Dude. Uh, but yeah, we got the Rob G merch out there, man. Uh, you guys should just definitely go and support the store spaceoutradio.com forward slash shop you, you can get a plethora of stuff as dave says you can get more than this uh let me back out here as you can see we have the sor socks the tumbler the sor ufo t uh the spaced out radio hoodie the rob g shirt the rob g socks which you have to get if you get the shirt you got to get the socks um the team rock sor t-shirt uh, uh, we got the Tim Senor alien shirt here. So you definitely got to make sure you represent for old Timmy. Uh, let's see. What else do we have in here? I like the trucker cap, the UFO UAP trucker cap, uh, is a nice one. Let's see. Uh, obviously the Dave Scott panties got to have some Dave Scott panties, right? Dave Scott panties. They're in the store. Definitely consider getting some, um, the Dave Scott draws, right? The Dave Scott draws. If you don't have any, you got to get a pair. Look at that old mug on the front there. You got to make sure you get uh, the Dave Scott draws because you've got aliens. <laughs> funny, funny, funny stuff. Um, you can get that at spacedoutradio.com forward slash shop. Uh, Tamothman is definitely promoting here. So, um, oh, okay. Wait a minute. I'll mark this for Dave Scott or he may still be watching. Dave Scott, Dare from Sack says. This is different sack saying this. We need S O R G strings in bras. I'm not saying that Deb from Sack said that. And hey, I gotta I, I agree. I agree, Deb from Sack. Uh it would be cool to have that there. And let's see. What else do we have here? Uh <laughs> Doug Shelby. Oh, laughing his ass off over there. Waking up the lady. Oh, Doug. I don't know if you want to do that. However, glad we could go ahead and uh, bring some joy to you guys here on this Sunday evening. You guys are getting ready for work. It's going to be 
a work week. What can you say, right? Monday through Friday. But you got Dave Scott that's going to go ahead and get you through that. Uh, and he'll be here 9 p.m. to midnight, Monday through Friday. Paramarv is asking a question. Space Out Radio, why are there different items available in Canada than the U.S.? Ooh, that's a good question. Because I don't know what, you know, I would love to see the Canada store. I don't know if I can see it to know uh, what's not there. Um, if we could figure out what isn't there, then probably you could figure out why it isn't there, right? Oh, no, Dead Fish Cheese Spread is going a step further uh, saying that you need edible underwear. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think we're going to, this isn't um, Victoria's Secret or, uh, <laughs> but I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I'll leave that up to Dave. Dave uh, is adding things to the store. Um, I'll make the suggestion on your behalf. How about that? Okay. All right, so with that being said, I think we had fun today, man. I think today was a really good, solid, deep show. I think the topic was on point. Um, I think that, you know, we we have showed tonight that um, you can have the conversation uh, without really subscribing to one side or the other. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know... Uh, as far as the spirituality of this whole phenomena, you know, still things that we're figuring out and having these conversations just lets us connect the dots and kind of try to figure out your filling blanks in, in, in different things of that nature. So we will have uh, more shows like this um, where we get into these deep conversations. I actually already have something thought up that uh that we could speak to the reverend about that we'll probably set up for the next show so with that being said let me go ahead and give it up to our super chatters for tonight uh that help support the show we appreciate uh you aloha dave 13 uh saying he always learns a ton from reverend carter one of my favorite guests definitely is and which is why uh, he's going to stay in our rotation uh, because I appreciate what it is that he's bringing to the table. Uh, I can promise you the next time we talk, it'll be an even tougher conversation, but it's one that uh, will definitely need to be had. So I'll let you kind of ponder on that for a while. Uh, Miss Catherine Jones, thanks for your support. I said, thank you for bringing the knowledge. Bless you, Reverend Carter. So all the love tonight. Thank you for your support picks. Uh, with the $5 Super Chat, thank you so much for your support. And then also uh, Deb from Sacramento. So with that being said, you guys are all space travels out there. Consider taking the next step and join the club. That's right. You can join the Space Out Radio Space Travelers Club for as little as $5 per month by joining our Patreon. We appreciate your support to all of our viewers and listeners across the globe thanks for tuning your frequency to spaced out radio where we do what we do best and what's that you ask guys we own the night you guys have a great rest of your night make sure you're here tomorrow uh, monday through friday for dave scott then back here for the after hours next weekend it's going to be another action-packed weekend we're going to keep doing this we're going to keep raising the bar we're going to keep also moving the needle uh, with tough conversations make sure you guys are back here for that have a great rest of your night have a great week and see you then take care <laughs>